Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. It's the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by Energy Power Sports, their Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. Check out energypowersports.ca. Check them out on YouTube, Energy Power Sports, and make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Energy Power Sports. And don't forget, this weekend is the big one. It's mark, mark your calendar because November 5th is Energy's open house. They have the best deals of the season on every brand. Ski-Doo, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, Lynx, Mercury, Manitou, Alumacraft, Oakley sunglasses. You guys need some. All non-current current is on sale 20 to 75% off in-store only. There's many other in-store specials of non-current helmets in-store only. You can treat yourself to a specialty beverage from the bearded barista. And lunch is on Energy Power Sports, courtesy of Livia's Food Truck. There's prizes. There's giveaways. You can meet the Hillsburg Snow Roamers. You can plan an epic adventure with Uncharted Society. The gang from KX94.7 will be on site. It goes on and on. Make sure you're there in Oakville, Energy Power Sports. It's also brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. There's one thing a rubber track's not going to do on ice and, and hard packed snow, and that's penetrate through it. And that's where the fast track snowmobile traction products come into play. They have a special template that's geared for specifically designed and engineered for your sled. And uh, if you uh, purchase through the uh, fasttrack.co website and use the coupon code, code SNOW, put a toolkit in your shopping cart and use SNOW, S-N-O-W, and that toolkit's absolutely free. That's F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C dot C-O. There's no K in track, fasttrack.co. Thanks again for the sponsors. We'll hear more of those when we get into the fan photos. And our, our guest co-host tonight is Corey Brock. How are you, Corey? Good, man. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. And right uh, I'm gonna br I'm gonna bring in our featured guest, but I, I want to <laughs> tell you about this guy. He was born and raised in Sudbury, Ontario. He's an established artist in the Canadian country music industry, and he's been touring Canada and performing for 20 years. Larry's been included in several profile events, including opening acts such as Keith Urban, Brooks and Dunn, Terry Clark, Tim McGraw, Johnny Reed, and more. He's been featured guest on several television programs such as Canada in the Rough, Fins and Skins, The Red Green Show, Go Riding and Snowmobiler TV, and he's been on Mud Brats, Snow Prat, Brats YouTube, in the background songs. Larry exemplifies outdoor power enthusiasts. In his downtime from the road, you can find Larry on his motorcycle, cruising the back roads, ATVing, or on a snowmobile riding the trails in Ontario. From his love of power sports, Larry has been endorsed by the Ontario Tourism as an ambassador for power sports. I'm so proud to have Larry on our show tonight. Welcome aboard, Larry. Right on. It's going, Larry. Woo! <laughs> There's all the fans going crazy. <laughs> crazy. Do the way. Larry, did you hear the did you hear the intro? I love it, man. It was awesome. Holy I stole it from your website. I mean, did did I miss anything? <laughs> we'll get to it. <laughs> Actually, Larry, I I was I, I didn't know who you were. We were snowmobiling up in Sudbury last year, and uh Corey and Shannon were up a day earlier than my son and I. And they had been riding the whole day before. And Corey starts telling the story about back in his younger days, he used to hang out a, at a bar in Guelph called the Stampede Corral. Ranch. And the Stampede <laughs> Ranch. Yeah. Sorry. It's all good. And he said this guy used to come on there and he would rock the house. And lo and behold, they're up on Wolf Mountain. And this guy, Larry Berrio, was up on Wolf Mountain. And I heard the name and I started laughing. And then he goes, no, like this guy is the real deal, man. And he showed me pictures and we got talking. And I said that day, what did I say on that ride? 
Corey. <clears throat> I said, I'm, we're going to have gonna, him on the show. I said, I got to get him on the yeah. show. W- yeah. We went back that night and we we're having a few beers in the hotel room and we were watching your videos and your snowmobiling that, that's a, uh, he, he wrote a song for Ontario, uh, what a ride. And, uh, and the song's amazing. It's all about smashing the throttle and pulling wheelies. And I don't know what, it, what the lyrics are, but I, I went, he's got to be on our show. So I'm glad you're on our show. You're, you're the real deal. It, you, you watch the, you watch everything about you and it's, it's all about power sports and I love it. And country music too. Can't forget that. Oh, that's, that's awesome, man. What an intro you guys are giving me here. Holy geez, man. Yeah. Wow. So that's where my, that's where my man crush started with you, buddy. Well, I'm, I'm going to have a glass of wine and cheers that buddy. Yeah, for sure. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. So you tell us a bit about yourself. What, what, what are you up to nowadays? Wow. Um, we're getting geared up for, you know, the winter, obviously, and we're getting excited for that snow to fall. And well, before the snow, obviously you guys know as well as that I do, we need, uh, we need the cold weather first to freeze up the ground and the ponds and all that stuff before we can get some snow. So it's coming. We're beginning in November. So, <clears throat> uh, we're always very blessed up north to be, uh, to be sledding before January 1st. And, uh, you know, again, we've got so many lakes up here in that day. So, um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really uh, getting pumped up about doing some sledding this winter. Uh, going to be writing some new music uh, this winter as well, too, uh, right for a single that I want to get ready for in the uh, in the spring, uh, early, you know, late March to release out to country radio across Canada. We're starting to plug uh, a lot of our uh, promotional packages to a lot of country music festivals uh, across Canada. Um and that's uh, slowly starting to, uh, you know, to, to place, to get in a place. And, you know, we've obviously got hit hard with COVID, losing uh, a lot of shows for the past two years. And normally I'm doing 10, 20 shows in the summer. And last year I think we did five of them. Um, but uh, they're still coming back up, you know, which is uh, which is a real good thing, man. I'm really excited about it. Oh, absolutely. It's got to nice. be a relief to see, see things getting somewhat back to normal. And you had your big... Uh, Sandbanks, I see you're wearing the t-shirt, um, charity concert that you did, you do every summer. How did that go this year? Oh, it was, it was crazy. It's one of, uh, those things we started off, uh, we were going into our sixth year this year. Uh, we never had to miss due to COVID because it always ended up where it was. COVID was really low at some point, but then it came back up. We we're at that low point. Uh, everybody's outside. They obviously they're in the water and everything. Um, this year was a massive, uh, turnout. We ended up having from the drone shot that, uh, some guy took of the event itself. Um, I zoomed in and I counted just over 170 boats. Nice. Uh, that's insane. You know what I mean? 170 boats and you average is at least a minimum of four people per boat, uh, on it. We've seen pontoon boats coming in with 10, 12 people on it. And, uh, so we had a, a, just an absolutely incredible turnout. The weather was perfect. Um, you know, it was just, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Didn't every we talk year, about that year, sorry. So I thought Gary, uh, didn't we talk about trying to get there? We That's did. right. Yeah, yeah, wait, till the, Let's go. wait till you see the pictures. When I, when I show the pictures, I got to get my wife to turn it off. Uh, so you can't, she can't see the pictures because uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell her they're all, all those women are happily married and. You know. <laughs> Yeah. It looks like oh, my great. wife it comes out great. every year and my two daughters, I got, uh, I got a 24 year old and a 19 year old. They come out to it every year. They look forward to it. They come out with their boyfriends and uh, yeah, it, it's just a, uh, it's a cool family couples. Uh, it's just everybody just it comes out. Yeah, there, all, this, this thing, it's yeah, a free all, concert too, to boot. Eh? So that's you can't the best. Beat that. yeah, that's yeah. the best. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that. You also do a charity ride in the winter time. Uh, the the big deal, right? Larry Barrow's big deal. Tell us about that. So that started, uh, we're going on, I believe it's going to be our 20th or 21st year this year uh, nice. that I started that. And I started that off with uh, Mark Lang. He, was, he used to own Snowmobiler TV. Uh, yeah. And uh, we had got together and we became buddies over the years. And uh, we come up with this idea of doing this big deal poker run. Uh, and it started off with Snowmobiler TV with Mark Lang. Uh, we did that for about uh, four years together, and then I continued and branched off. Uh, it was just a local run at the time, and uh, we picked the charity, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sudbury, uh, from day one. 
and we've been raising funds for them, uh, you know, every single year. And, and now, even before we post it, and uh, we just had our meeting this afternoon with our board of directors and all that stuff with, um, we've got a big team now. We're, we're about eight of us that help organize this event and they all uh, promote, uh, they all um, uh, volunteer their time. Uh, the Northeastern Ontario Construction Association, which is known as NOCA, uh, their staff there, um, they, uh, they volunteer their staff. They pay their staff to help organize this event wow. and uh, to raise as much money as we can for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, last year, we had it uh, two years in a row at the Clarny Mountain Lodge at the brand new. Um, if you've ever been there, you, 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 have, you have to go. Beautiful it's looking, a, yeah. Wicked, wicked destination. And we host the event and called the, uh, the Canada House, which is the largest log conference center in the world. Um, and, uh, every year we sell it, we sell it even before going to the public. Uh, we have a lot of companies and businesses, uh, owners that come out and ride in this event. And, uh, this year I think we're going to hold possibly a two day event, a Friday and a Saturday. Nice. Uh, to make nice. that experience that much better. And when yeah, is it's a pretty, pretty cool event. When is it? So this year it's February 25th, which is Saturday. And it looks like on the 24th, uh, we're, uh, we're so we're sending out a, a mass email to all the past participants to who likes the idea of doing the Friday night as well too. So basically, you'd ride there on Friday. We do a big fish fry Friday night, and then we have a guided tour for Saturday that would take us off to Manitoulin Island, maybe a little current, uh, depending on the ice conditions are. And um, but we'd have a guided tour for Saturday, and then we head back over to the um, uh, the Canada House for dinner and entertainment. And I do a show that night too, and. What's the cost? Uh, so uh, it's hundred dollars per person mm -hmm. uh, for the poker run. You get a chance to win a thousand bucks cash. Uh, we got prizes galore that we give away every year. I give away a custom electric guitar, um, nice. and uh, yeah, we got all kinds of prizes we give away. The big thing is we're trying to raise as much funds as we can for Big Brothers Big Sisters. They lost out on their events for two years, solid mm -hmm. uh, through COVID, and um, they have you know probably ten events a year that they host to be able to uh, raise funds to keep their organization up and running. Uh, and last year we raised, I think it was $35,000. Uh, nice and Yeah, we're hoping to, uh, we want to get to that $50,000 mark uh, this year. So, um, and it's all split heads. It's just a bunch of, just everybody just wants the ride. We take off from Coniston. Uh, it's about a three and a half hour ride, depending how you ride. Uh, we've got stop locations along the way, fire pits. So uh, usually it's a good four hour ride. Uh, taking your time and and then you get into Killarney or I mean into, yeah into Killarney and you know everybody has some drinks they park the sleds for the night and uh, have an amazing dinner and entertainment it's a pretty really wicked event sounds good seen some videos on it. it looks like fun man now when you when you go like obviously you have enough music to to do your own your own music or do you cover other artists as well I do cover other artists. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, nice. I've released over 16 songs to country radio across Canada over the years. Um, so I play, there's a lot of people that recognize my music. Uh, I will play some festivals where they've never heard of me before. Um, but we still play the original music because that's, I want to be known for my original music. But we do cover uh, some artists. Um, I generally try not to cover the up and coming, the new artists. Cause I just, I don't want to be known as a cover band. So we usually pull out stuff like I'll do, uh, uh, you know, everything from sweet home Alabama to uh, boots or hearts by the tragically hip, uh, which I redid in one of my recordings. Um, you know, we'll do a here for a good time by trooper. Um, nice. we do, um, in the air tonight by Phil Collins, uh, just a variety of, of really cool music that kind of fits into my style of music, you know? Uh, I grew up listening to Alabama and Dwight Yoakam. And then uh, later on, I got into my cousin introduced me to ZZ Top. And right on. Kind of, so it's that ZZ Top meets Alabama to just whatever. And uh, the the, uh, the set that we do, we're all high energy. Like we don't do any slow songs all night. It's just no, you know, that's punch you yeah. in the face and just play hard. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's what we do, man. I love it. Uh, I love it. No, that's good. Who is your inspiration? Well, I guess you mentioned them growing up. Like you have a good mix of a rock. Who do you think's doing a good job out there right now in the country music scene? 
That's a really good. Um, uh, I love Keith Urban. Keith Urban's just been always just uh, <clears throat> after meeting the guy too. Like what a down to earth guy. My wife and I had a chance to chat with him uh, the night that he played, and he talked with us afterwards. And you know his music uh, is just is unbelievable. He writes the majority of the songs, and he's just a just a really incredible artist. There's so many really good artists that are up and coming from like. Uh, you know, Thomas Rhett is just, you know, just a, yeah. a writing machine of, of music. And, um, you know, Jason Aldean, uh, you know, I, I love his style. I love his music. Um, I still want to kind of keep that, that country tradition. And I'm finding that more and more they're starting to bring in yours. Like, I think every second song on radio, unfortunately, now talks about pickup trucks and drinking beer. Yeah, um, yeah so it, you know, there yeah. used to be a lot of it, then it kind of faded away, and then all of a sudden it's right back in again. And uh, mm. um, it, it's cool. Um, I'm not into that rap country or anything. Good for the young, good for the younger crowd, right? It is, yeah. you know what? And we're yeah. building up a huge uh, country fan base. Um, but again, I don't want you know. You always want to keep make sure that you know, country is you know your, your borderline country rock. You know what I mean? And you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, Dwight Yoakam oh, sure. played that the best. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, we got some house cleaning to do. We got a, uh, we got a, uh, a super chat from Dustin Ingram. He says, five bucks. Cheers, boys. I'm going to do the unthinkable this weekend and buy a ski to LOL. But if Polaris comes out with a 650 boost, I'm snow checking it, LOL. <laughs> but who else is in the house here? Let's have a look. Uh, uh, Wisco Sledhead says, what's up, fellas? Greg Kelly was in the house last night and then realized that we weren't running. Um, Coffee Water Beer says, hello, Tuesday. Pro Polaris. Rob's in the house. Good evening, peeps. Renegade X. Evening, guys. Uh, Mike, Mikester and Two Drums. He says, hello. Uh, DP Rocks is in the house. He says, hello. Bruce Stewart, of course, he's there. What's up, everyone? Just Fly Lows there. Uh Mikester and two dr set drum says uh, he's got his sticks out. LOL drum. Um, DP Rock says hell yeah, Corey. Um, what else we got here? Dan B says hey, I uh, hope everyone had a great Halloween. Corey Drink Jinx is in the house. Good evening, Dracula voice. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Dan B says hey, Larry. Um, who else uh, is going on the group ride? Wisco Sledhead says, Bobby O says, I can't wait to hear the details for the group ride. He's crossing his fingers. It's in the UP. Uh, Mikester gives you the, the devil horns, Larry. And, uh, there was another question here. Where is it? Uh, um, Corey drink says a snowmobile song. Someone actually had a request here. They said, uh, play free bird. <laughs> 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 Do you get that all the time? No man, that's that's a first to play free bird. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you got it. People, people uh, got to be bugging to play free bird. Mikester what, and this? two drums is his. Drum, looks like your drummer, Larry. Yeah, that's that, that's that him. There you go. Fun. Yeah, that's cool. Is it? Yeah. Has your band been with you since pretty much day one, or are they uh, like? Have you changed, or or you know? I've changed bands often. Um, not that it's my choice by any means. Uh, some of them due to either touring, they can't hit the road as much, uh, musicians today, the majority of them have day jobs because like you can't tour up in Canada year round. Uh, so a lot of them do have day jobs and they really got to be flexible. Um, some of them will start families and have little kids and, you know, have to bail out or, or whatever. Uh, but it, it seems like I'm always finding, you know, I, when I was talking to my wife about it when I first had to get rid of, you know, my first band back in the day and then my second band, you know, it just always seems to, uh, we're finding, I wouldn't say better, but more of a camaraderie. And I'm not always looking for the best band, the best guitar player, the best drummer. Uh, to me, it's, it's a bunch of guys that first of all, that can get together um, and uh, understand each other and feel the vibe. You know what I mean? It's like sledding. There's a certain yeah. amount of people I like to sled with. And then there's certain guys that I know very well, but I won't sled with because they're just they're idiot riders and they just they don't ride the way I do. And you know what I mean? It's, it's uh, true. So uh, same thing with the band. Um, so I'm really blessed to have uh, the new guys with me. 
Uh, Nick Fernandez on base has been with me for almost five years. Uh, he's based out of Kitchener, Waterloo. Um, you know, Mark, uh, buddy Mark, did, he's down in uh, Brantford, um, and he's wicked, wicked guitar player. Uh, he's been with me going on two years now. And Mike, obviously, he's on drums there right now. He's been with me for a couple of years as well. And right what a solid group. What a great bunch of guys. Um, you know, guys that I can call my friends. And I look, I get it forward and I look excited, you know, about playing uh, on stage with these guys because they bring the vibe to me. You know what I mean? And nice. it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Nice. That's awesome. Well, glad to have Mike Mikester and two drums in the house. I'm sure he, I'm <laughs> sure he owns more than... I'm sure he owns more than two <laughs> drums. I I don't know, you know. Oh yeah, he owns uh, he owns a few kits. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. great yeah. guy. My man. son, my son's a drummer. Unfortunately, when university hit, he had to he had to sell his drums. So um, you you can't play them in a dorm in a university dorm. And yeah, in his like apartment, the electric drums. Yeah. Well, he's actually he he took up guitar and bass at the same time too. So he's got his bass and his guitar at the at the uh, at his apartment. So. Okay. He took his amp too, but I, I I told him you're not plugging that thing in, man. You're gonna it's lock like, that place it's down. Like Drew saying, is, Le- "Is Larry gonna play us a tune tonight?" That's what Drew's saying, Gary. Well, so who's that? My, that's, that's my Gary's son. son. I I don't know how bad I want to lose monetization. <laughs> if he wants to play a tune, I'll take the hit for it. That's fine. He's already making uh, millions off of my video. I I use his his. Uh, what a ride song in there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love making it. millions <laughs> million did you get a check from mud brats youtube with like hey here it is 50 grand this week from the sudbury video <laughs> well, if, if that starts happening man yeah i'm gonna uh yeah we're, we're gonna pay you back buddy we're gonna do a big trip <laughs> it's it's there it's coming it's, it should be rolling in look for that video sudbury um it, I've got two videos there and Corey's in them and his wife, Shannon. And we use the, I thought I, I need a good song and what a ride was a song. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a hit for it. That's fine. I'll take that's a hit awesome. for Larry. Any, anytime I can share his music to the world. That's, that's what it's all about. I appreciate it much, man. No, I really do. That's good. So what do you ride, Larry? What do you ride for sleds? Ah, I knew that question was coming. Well, of course. So I think I know, but I know what well, he rides. So we're going to start this off where uh, back in the day, I started off um, probably when I was 10 years old. My dad had a Skidoo Olympic with a 16 horsepower. And it had, uh, I think, 113 boogie wheels on it. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we built up the road. I ended up in uh, my first sled for myself was a Yamaha Phaser. Uh, Then we moved on to... The Players 500, and then I back into the Players World Players, probably have for about three years. Um, rode them like crazy, and then uh, then I got endorsed with uh, Polaris out of uh, Mid City Motorsports here in Sudbury, and uh, just come up with an idea about you know what I, I wrap my truck, I wrap my uh, you know my tour bus and everything, and I come up with this concept about you know using a demo sled and wrapping it up with my name on it and everything and using it for sledding. So I signed a deal with uh, with Polaris and um, rode them for three years. Uh, you know, everything from the switchback to like they were awesome, man. I really, really enjoyed them. Uh, everything from the 600, 650, uh, just a really solid sled. There's a couple of them that you know I preferred more than others. And then after that, I got into um, uh, they did a cutback on their demos because uh, we would continue with it. Uh, and then I got in with uh, with Articat, and Articat I was with them with for uh, for four years. I had everything from the ZR6000 uh, long track down to right now. I'm currently riding uh, the ZR7000 Articat. Uh, you know, it's got the Yamaha motor in it, the uh, four stroke. Um, nice. Loving it. Great trail sled. Uh, it's heavy for you know for boondocking and that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, uh, as well as you know, uh, when you start heading up north. Uh, the pole lines aren't grass pole lines. They are rock-filled pole lines. And I see more damaged sleds coming off the pole lines you can shake a stick at. So I kind of stay away from that. You know, um, that's what I ride. Uh, nice. I've been nice. blessed through uh, being with Ontario Tourism uh, as ambassador for power sports for over four and a half years. Uh, I got an opportunity to ride all the new upcoming sleds, everything from Yamaha and Articat. And then Polaris, and it was just uh, like just 
there's another manufacturer out there called Skidoo. You should try them sometime. And Skidoo as well, too. <laughs> yes, I was drawing a blank there. Going, what the freak is <laughs> um, And the Skidoo's. So you know what, uh, everybody, you know, as a lot of do, you're riding on the trails. Everybody tries to wear their brands and, and razz everybody about everybody's brands. At the end of the day, you're driving something new, man. You're driving something killer. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So they're my all good. Got a skidoo, my brother-in-law, my sister—they all ride Skidoo. They're uh, uh, they're diehards on it. And um, you know, my cousin's got a Polaris. Uh, my best friend's got a Polaris. My best buddy's got an Arctic cat. I got a cat. So we're pretty well riding anything. So um, they're they're all nice sleds that are out there, man. Uh, if cool. I had to buy another one, good question. I am not sure. <laughs> Be a skidoo from here. Energy Power Sports in Oakville, Ontario. Oh, where Rob Reiner going? says, "Good, good, good plug for, for skidoo, Gary." Well, that's what I do. That's, that's what, what you do, do, buddy. I love uh, it. Dan B says, "Anything new will do." He says, "Any." They're all they're all doing a good job manufacturing. Arctic Cat's got some really nice stuff coming down the pipe. Um, yep. can't wait to see that on the snow. Um, but uh, yeah, they're all do a really good job. So, listen, do you guys want to catch some fan photos, and we'll talk more to Larry as we go through the fan photos? Sure. Absolutely, man. Okay, let's do this. Bear with me. I just got to launch this uh, this up right now. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Check out FastTrack.co. And there we go here. So anyway, uh, we got Larry on because oh. he's a he, he is like the uh, the epitome of of Sudbury snowmobiling, and we've we've got a our group ride announcement today, and it's in Sudbury in February. It's the seventeenth and nineteenth, so it's the weekend before Larry's big event. So you can you can do both, actually. And Jim from the Sportsman is just too shy to be on tv he said he's got a voice for radio so he uh he didn't he didn't want to come on to to promote it so this is the wrong slide um the dates are wrong on this one but anyway yeah he, uh, he didn't want to come on the show to promote it um so we got larry to help us sell sudbury to you guys and and show you some stuff but uh it's uh, february 17th to 20th is the monday the holiday you'll stay to the 19th um, a lot of people are going on the 16th. Uh, Corey and Shannon will be on the, there on the 16th, which yep. is a Thursday night. Drew and I will be there if we can get Drew out of school. It just depends what his exam schedule is, but uh, we will uh, we'll be definitely there sometime on the on the 17th, the Friday, if uh, if all else fails. But uh, we're gonna have a good time. But here, I, I just put together some pictures from the Sudbury area here. And we're going to do this shot with our whole gang together. Um, I'll, I'll put that slide up again as we get rolling here. but um, And you guys can take a screenshot of it or whatever you want to do. But uh, we probably figured, Corey and I were chatting today, we think we might have 21 people booked already. Uh, yeah. and, and I think the lodge, the main lodge is ours. I think it holds 34. And then the, uh, the tower, there's a tower accommodations um there it's an older structure the tower is but um we can use that for overflow as we need but if you can get in the main lodge don't hesitate jim may be tough to reach until the end of the day tomorrow but you can always email sportsman's lodge uh or you can call jim and just tell him you're with the snowmobile sessions group and he will uh he will he will make it happen so we're going to do this photo and I'm going to get a drone shot of us all out on the lake uh, uh, with with this photo because this is right in front of the lodge. There's food at the lodge. It includes breakfast and dinner for 150 bucks Canadian per person. And night, it, uh, and yeah. there's gas on site, which is really, really nice. And you'll see sites like this. We'll take Amazing you down to the place. World, yeah, world's longest snowmobile bridge. It holds 100 sleds nose to nose. And uh, it's 90 feet above the French River. Have you been here, Larry? That's one spot I have not been. I've never been uh, across the bridge. We're going to do it uh, this winter. That's Family awesome. Day. Family day. You're going to come ride with us. Right. And the, uh, the, the actual, um, there's another bridge 
within two miles of this that's a little bit smaller but same type of looking structure but this bridge is pretty amazing when you're standing on it it's it makes your knees wobble that's for sure especially yeah, when it's on windy. the bridge uh, i've been on the bridge to walk it in the summertime uh we've walked across it but i've never been across on the sleds uh but yeah. uh yeah, yeah. very very picturesque Just absolutely beautiful i'll be looking forward to hitting that uh this winter yeah, for sure. Well, if, if you look at the Sudbury video, if anyone's watching, I've got two videos there that uh, we actually go to this bridge and what a what a hoot that that day was and and uh, and that was Family Day weekend last year. And this would be Wolf Lookout, would it, Larry? Yeah, yeah. that's Wolf yep. Mountain. Wolf Mountain. Okay, there we go. And there's tons of stuff to see and do there. Um, a lot of times you can see the Inca smokestacks, which are the super stacks. They're kind of neat to see in the distance. You're uh, you're big in the mining as well. Like you wrote a song called Rock Town that uh, that's all about the miners and giving tribute to them. And um, can you share a little bit of the history of Sudbury? I know back in the day that the nickel is the big mine there and it wiped out a lot of the, the vegetation in Sudbury. And uh, do you want to do you know the story about it, Larry? I, I do. I do. My dad uh, was uh, was a miner. Uh, he's actually in my music video as the welder. <clears throat> That's what he did for a living. Uh, right. My One of my good friends, Al, he's a miner. Everybody that's in the music video uh, dressed up as miners are actual miners. So I got my that's uncle, awesome. my dad. I uh, got two of my buddies that are in there, actual miners. That's what they do for a living and doing the job that they're doing. Um, they're, um, so they're, they're, you know, that's what we portrayed uh, their life. We wrote this song down in Nashville with a good buddy of mine, Gil Grand, which is originally from Sudbury. And the history of Sudbury goes, you know, goes way back, uh, back in the day. I'm, uh, I live on Whitson Lake. Uh, literally, the windows that are behind me is the lake that's right there. And uh, the groom trail comes right across the lake. So in the wintertime, this is my favorite spot to sit because I got my fireplace here. And when I got the fire going, I can just see the little white lights coming across the lake. And it just uh, it just drives me bananas uh, to get out there and, and go riding or I just come back in. And But back in the day in Sudbury, they actually used to haul um, logs by horses across Whitson from uh, the north end of Sudbury. And uh, they would continue up this way. What happened back in the day, they were uh, for mining for nickel. Uh, they would um, uh, they'd have these uh, burn pits and they would put all the rock. Uh, on top of these logs, they would light it. And they would just keep stacking these things, man. And these these fire pits were probably the, the size of four homes. And they'd have probably 40 or 50 of those going, burning all winter long. So it would actually melt the rock uh, to get down to the ore, um, you know, back in the day. So there was a lot, obviously, a lot of smoke uh, in the air. That wasn't the smoke that actually killed the uh, the vegetation around here. It was that they were chopping so many trees. And if anybody remembers, there was a massive fire in the early 1900s in Chicago uh, that burned down half of the city. Well, the majority of lumber to rebuild Chicago came from Sudbury. Hmm. Really? We had logs that uh, we had trees here that you couldn't put your arms around. Uh, it was there was you couldn't see any rock anywhere in Sudbury. Uh, and that was back in, you know, the 1930s, 1940s. And, uh, and then, you know, they used it for mining. They used it for, uh, um, you know, again, at the, the Chicago uh, fire uh, that was used a lot there. So they basically outran their resources and chopped everything that was in sight. And, uh, you know, if, if you've only been to Sudbury, I would say probably in, in the 50s, have never been up here since then. Uh, you'll notice that there's like there's not much rock to be seen uh anymore compared to what there used to be vegetation's growing the mines out here are doing excellent jobs by replanting trees and everything and uh you know we live in a, in a beautiful paradise up here yeah well i guess you guys have won uh, all kinds of environmental awards as well for rebuilding the the uh the environment up there you know replanting the trees and getting the the vegetation growing again but it's interesting to see that in sudbury the trees are still very young and the further south you go, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like, it, what yeah. a what a devastating history. But it's nice to be able to ride because there's areas like the power lines we're on. It looks like you're riding on the moon, you know? Yeah, in, in, some, in some areas, absolutely. And it's weird that you ride in Sudbury and you'll notice that the trees are smaller. You head north of Sudbury 
and all of a sudden the trees are just massive and they're you know one on top of the other like beautiful beautiful landscaping back here so um yeah, as you've rolled yeah. up here before uh you'll notice that uh, just you know just north of Sudbury just north I'm in a valley uh called Valcaran I'm half an hour north of the city and another half an hour north of here you're up in the mountains um which is uh yeah it's it's beautiful <clears throat> last awesome. year I rode up last year I rode up to Shining Tree up to the tree bear tree bear yep. camp yep. and man that trail going up there is just phenomenal the, yeah, the, the logging road, road, you know, the logging roads and, uh, yeah, it was fast and super smooth and yeah. One of my favorite, uh, favorite trails for sure around Sudbury. So yeah, that's, that's the shining tree is, is amazing. Um, sportsman's lodge. We had uh, my big deal poker run at the sportsman's lodge for a couple of years. Uh, back then it was owned by uh, a good friend of mine, George. Uh, I've never met the new owner, Jim yet, but what a fabulous place. Uh, you know, the food, the location, on uh, you know Kukiemi Lake, just absolutely stunning out there, man. Uh, you know, you ride the trails anywhere from there. You're riding around all like uh, like you know Juan Pate, uh, north it. of it, and you know Shining yeah. Tree, and yeah, it's some beautiful areas up here for sure. Well, that's what we like about the Sportsman's Lodge. It <laughs> seems central to everything, right? Like you can you can pretty much pick your day from there. So yeah, th what is, we're looking yeah. at right here in the photo is the main lodge. So this is on the left hand side there. This is the corner of the main lodge that we've got uh, we've got reserved for our group. Um, and you're gonna see some other. This is the tower building that we'll use for spillover. But it, I just put this in here because it's such a cool look. Like it, yes. it is a wilder it is a wilderness camp. This isn't the uh, the the Paris Weston. Hilton Hilton. Hilton. It, it's not Weston. the Weston, but it's it's rustic as hell. And it's very, very cool. And this is the type of stuff you see when you're on the trails. Um, this person standing next to huge rock. I don't know who these people are. These, this is your typical room in the lodge. Again, like very, very uh, rustic and cavity and woodsy. And it's a wilderness lodge. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome looking. Oh, the, uh, the, the vibe when you go in, there's the lodge right there. You know, all yeah. the logs in there, that was built back, I believe it was built in the late 40s, early 50s, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Right on. So awesome. Yeah. Love it. And look look at the old snow ski do up there. Like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. All the old fish hanging on the wall and the uh, there's a there's moose antlers. And I can't wait to, to hang out with all you guys in this room here. Man, again, 150 bucks Canadian a night and it includes breakfast and dinner. Like you can't go wrong. That's crazy. That's I nice. know. I know. And there we go. It's gonna it's gonna fill up. So I mean, it, we'll we'll get to the slide. I think it's coming up again. But I want to do this shot too. This is a this is a group that was just in there, and uh, they uh, they took they they filled the, the every level of the tower and took a shot of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know where this is, Larry. Wait, what's that a shot of? Wapate River. That's, uh, it? that's the Wapate River. Is it okay? Cool. Yeah, that's so that not flows from off the bridge of uh, Lake Wanapate, uh, and it flows all the way, obviously south to uh, the Wanapate River, and yeah, that's, that's part of it right there. What are they standing on? Is it is it the sled trail, or is it a, is this the Bridge of Death, or what is this? You know what? I thought it was the old railway um, bed there, but uh, no, that's just a. Uh, I'm trying that to might see just a handrail. Is it? Is that just a rail? That we're looking yeah, it's at, just like, a rail. Yeah, that's yeah, that's so just a okay. homemade uh, bridge. But yeah, there used to well, the the railway bed is still there. That uh, if you want to, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> trust your life and, and go across it now, it's pretty bad. They've actually removed uh, some of the um, uh, the boards across it because it was getting in really bad shape, and uh, uh, yeah, they didn't want anybody getting hurt. You fall off of that no, bed. No, right I think here. they pulled. I think they put gates up <clears throat> as well. Like yeah, they like they put physical structures. fences. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they they had to. It was getting too rough shape, and nobody was responsible for it. You know? No, no. It wasn't this is your typical. Anymore, so. Yeah, and this is your typical wake up in the morning in Sudbury, and this is what your sled looks like. I mean, that's a daily thing, and you can see you can see Jim in the background snow blowing there. Mm -hmm. And this is from the this is from the lodge balcony right out back. Yeah, yep. that's Kukagami Lake. Yeah, sunset over it. It's pretty sweet. And there's a, there's a side view of the lodge. Pretty cool. Yeah, it, but I'm it's telling gorgeous. you, it's 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 a 
it's a rustic mountain resort. So here it is. Space is limited. Call Jim to reserve 705-853-4434. Mention you're in the snowmobile mm -hmm. sessions group. And I'm telling you, if you want in the lodge, you got to do it. Like, I know you probably won't reach him tomorrow because you know he's been away at the beginning of the week. But you got to leave a message and get on the queue. And I know a lot of guys have already done that. And uh, Jim will get that to them as they uh, as they come. So, and that includes a home-cooked breakfast and dinner. 150 bucks Canadian per person per night. So, um, like I said, 17th to 19th is the nights you need. We could ride on the 20th, but 20th is the home day. Um, if you want to show up on the 16th, there'll be people there on the 16th. So it'll be a good time. Probably do some fun stuff around it too, Corey. We're probably going to do a little poker run, fun poker yeah, run for yeah, you guys. Something, and, something in the books here, yeah. Yeah, for so sure. we'll, we'll we'll work on those details as we get going uh, um, as we get going along. But yeah, it's uh, I can't wait. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Oh, it's pretty cool. So anyway, th these are the fan photos. So Curtis McRobb says uh, this uh, first show is this weekend. He finally got to meet his Superman. And that's Blair Morgan there. And the second oh, picture nice. is from, yeah, yeah. And the second picture is, uh, is from uh, a trip with Pops to pick up his new sled a few weeks ago. He drove from Perry Sound to the Sioux for the sled. Every Monday night, we sit down, we watch the podcast. Keep up the great work, Gary Curtis McRobb. But that's great. Love it. You should come the on the ride. Need to come on the yep. ride. Yep, sure. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great to get Blair, Blair Morgan on the ride? <laughs> 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 he was on our show, Larry. Was he, he was really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was on our show when, when uh, th that was our first season we did it. And that was before he became a ski ambassador. So he's been – making the tours and the rounds this year. So everybody's got to meet him, but uh, it was great to have him the show when he was in, in hiding for quite a while. He was in hiatus, I guess you could say, but uh, yep. still rides. He's, he's got a customized motocross and he still races and rides it. And he's riding snowmobiles. He's riding ski side by side, side by side. Like he's, uh, yeah. he's, he's doing really good. So, and I'm glad to see that, that, that he inked a deal with ski Doo and he's one of their ambassadors and he's doing the show circuit now. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, Dennis Dilly, he says he departed Super Bowl Sunday. He did 731 miles in five days, saddlebag, uh, Ipshpeming, Baraga, copper, two days on Lake Gogabic and back to Ip Ishpeming. <laughs> Ish Ishpeming. I don't know. I can't, I think these guys just make these names up to stump me. I don't know, Larry, <laughs> but there's always the, there's always the one guy. There's, there's a guy with a, giving the thumbs up and the other one's giving me that wave with the middle finger that I get all the time on the trails. <laughs> right, I was talking buddy. to, I was talking to Doug Ford and he said, people wave at him the same way. Don't worry about it. Ah, there you go. Yeah. And then NLP Sledheads, he uh, he says, uh, hello, Gary, to my 2019 Skidoo GTL 600R with new shocks and TS skis. Love the TS skis. And Summit Seat. The Red 2000 Yamaha RS Rage was last year's rebuild upgrade project. It runs like new. And the, uh, the, the uh, second picture is the same Red Yamaha, but this year's rebuild upgrade project a 2003 no that's not it there this is the arctic cat he's picked up an arctic cat 1980 panther 440 fan cooled runs fine made some minor repairs and now it gets up and does ice fishing duty that's a sweet one. you ever ride something that old larry oh yeah my uh my buddy's parents had one the exact sled nice yeah. uh it's yeah. pretty sweet we had uh and then back in the day we had the enticer 340 Oh. Yeah, night. Oh, yeah, I love that. Dominator says Gary butchered every town in the UP, and Rob Reinhardt says the the UP towns are pretty hard to pronounce. Use your Uper voice. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. If it's from the UP, I'm gonna have to actually put it into Google and do that uh, read read back to me. You know. <laughs> so <laughs> he said he's extended the RX1 to 136 with a ripsaw track and it has Simmons skis. And a pile of other upgrades, like all sleds, all the front end bushings are oil light. So, and this is Corey Brock's photos. 
what are we looking at here, man? Well, that one I just took because uh, that just tells you how bad Polaris's are on fuel, really. Ah, <laughs> ah that that is a Polaris, so that's not <laughs> yours. No, that's God, awesome. no. Six jerry cans on that one. So yeah, I just thought it was kind of kind of kind of funny. I don't know where that they was... were planning on going, but uh, it was a it was a husband and wife riding it, and uh, yeah, so that that's that was that picture. So. That's at the lodge too, is it? Yeah, that was at Sportsman Lodge. Yeah, yeah. And then sure. you were you were saying a lot of people use it as a transient, like a mid stop. Yeah, like a loop. A... Yeah, like a looper looper stop, I guess you can call it, where they backpack and do a stop one night and then take off. That's why they do the the meal plans, the dinner, and then the the breakfast, and you eat, and then away you go on your next stop. So it's well, kind of cool. Was... Yeah, whoever's got that sled with all those gas cans, I would suggest them to uh, get that recall fixed on the gas tank first day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can make one hell of a fire right there. Yeah, man. no shit. Well, I, I, oh. I seen his wife. I seen his wife that rides on the back. She was shopping for open face helmets at the sled show <laughs> so she could smoke while they ride. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this picture here, I just loved. It was uh, it was a full house when we went, and I think. I think there was about 40 sleds in the parking lot at night and yeah that, so that's basically you pull in and you park your sled at night and uh you go have your beverages and your dinner and you know that's what you see so uh, it's, and that's, it's a lot, and that's a lodge right behind you it's pretty that's awesome. the lodge right behind you yep so yeah, yeah it's yeah. good i don't know i just it's one of my favorite spots i've been i've been there a few times and every year i seem to keep going back so it's i love it it's a good time oh, it's, it's a gem it's an absolute gem. I try to make it out at least once a year. Um, yeah. You know, I'm gonna have to go up and uh, and meet George. I mean, or Jim this time. Jim, Jim yeah, yeah, he's a nice, nice guy. Super nice. Yeah, guy. I gotta drop in and say hi to him this year. Yeah. So. Well, I'll give him give him hell too because I said uh, I said don't worry about coming on the show, Jim. I got I got someone even better, and he goes who? And I said Larry Barrio, and I I go, do you know who Larry Barrio is? He goes, no. <laughs> That's I all right. Went, the, I went the trips off. I said, pull it, pull our oh, no. reservation. <laughs> you got to remember though. Like, no, he's uh, from, he's not from uh, Sudbury yeah. though. Yeah. No, I know that he's from, uh, the Perry Sound or Barry? Aurelia. He's from Aurelia. Yeah. Aurelia. Yeah. 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 So, so you're, you're, you're Val Karen, you said? Yeah. Do you know Wayne Fraser? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, he's a buddy of mine. Soft Hub Canada. Yeah. 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 yeah I do. I'm going to talk to him about you. Okay, sure. you do that. I, I love that Wayne. On. I will. I love Wayne. He's awesome. And yeah, then uh, this, was, this is yeah, go ahead. Oh no, this was just a picture of uh Shannon and I. Just this was uh the day before you guys showed up last year, last family day, and we just went out on the on the lake and just some of the stuff you'll see up there, you know, some of the good uh good lookouts and, and you know, scenic stuff. So thought that was there a good so yeah, ha. this is what Jim brings out. Uh, if you ask him nicely, he'll bring this out when you get back from riding. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. Isn't this that is awesome. Uh, this was last year when we got back. Um, That's cool. Yeah, you just go back to your room, grab some beers, come out, and basically you just shoot the breeze about you know your day and where you went and. It's pretty cool, man. I, like I said, I can't say enough cool. things. I can't say enough thing, good things about the place, man. I love it. So it's going to be nice. I'm going to take my wife there this year. So her, she can, can experience it. And Yeah. Can you imagine so. like, like after finishing the ride, getting this fire pit out, grabbing a couple beers, talking about ghoulies, uh, wipeouts all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the problem there the was, day, but uh, no, that's, guys, that's want... awesome. I love that. Oh yeah, man. That's cool. You guys get a, a chance there. This, we should plan it and we'll, uh, we'll do a day run uh, from my place. We'll head down to Killarney for a, uh, for a day, man, and come back. I've never been there. That I'd sounds to good. Go yeah. 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 That sounds yeah, good. Sweet. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be in touch too. Like, and you're more than welcome to ride with us when we go out riding and stuff. And I don't expect anything like free con. I don't want free concerts or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's, that, it, that's up to you, but I, anytime there's cool guys to hang out with, uh, and if it helps promote your event, then, then I'll be it. Right. We Let's all do win. it. Absolutely. 
here's the tree bear camp up in shining tree which used to be called i think three bear camp um and then basically uh somebody somebody shot bought, the one bear somebody no somebody bought the camp i think uh, a couple years ago and they wanted i think the story was we asked them i, I can't recall but i think they wanted to keep somewhat the name just because people knew it yeah. um so they kind of kept it the same name. it's really cool inside it's there's bear rugs on the walls and you can see this obviously the sea cans and uh this was during covid you weren't supposed to go in but uh it was kind of chilly so they they did let us go in and eat um but uh it's a super cool place they have some cabins i think they have three cabins so they overlook uh, they overlook a lake. It's a small lake, and uh, yeah, so that was that was pretty fun. So well, they it's a, it's a, yeah, go ahead. They they, uh, they probably changed the name to Tree Bear Lodge because it's uh it's more French. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the name's the same. It's just the way that yeah. with the accent. Well, right, you know, well they you only know had what? to remove yeah. they only had to that, remove the H from the from the sign too, and move the T that, over. That's right, man. You know, yeah. nobody yeah. knows any difference except all the French guys down here in the valley. Uh, I'm yeah, born and right. raised in French. My, French is my first language. So, uh, you know, I've always heard it as three bear, tree bear, uh, the tree bear camp. Uh, that's where we're going to see. Uh, that's cool. You know, so I never you're even probably, know you're probably the right. <laughs> yeah. You're probably, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. I, I but, didn't even know they changed the name to tree bear. Because yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. And then even on the signs, I think on the signs on the road, it all still says three bear. And then I, I think it was just easier just to, just to keep it somewhat similar so that people knew, I guess, but uh, I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. It's a cool place inside all lo like wood and pine. And it's, it's really neat. They certainly yeah, got it. food, food. And, yeah. Yeah. So nice warm up is spot. It, they, go ahead. Is this shining tree? Did you say? Yeah, that's shining tree. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. It's a and good how, day. Like from, from, from sportsman lodge up, you know, across the top side of, you know, Sudbury there. And, and, uh, it's a good day run, I'd say. Like, you know, you leave nine o'clock, you're back by dinner time. Oh, it's um, it's a great run. Oh, yeah, up to Shining Tree, man, is a is a beautiful run, man. You're going up uh north of Lake Juan Pate up in the speed, and then you hit the C one eleven D, uh then all the way up to Shining Tree up in that neck of the woods. It's just a gorgeous friggin' ride, man. Yeah, the only yeah. like it's good. The only thing is like you got it's it's what it's kinda if you just go to Shining Tree and back, it's just one uh one trail kind of. Yeah. Um but you can do like the if you want to go crazy, you can do the big loop uh, over towards what to miss to Miskaming or something, and then back down the A trail. I think you can head off yeah towards the old Ricky Lodge. The old Ricky, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then uh, yeah. it's it's quite a haul though. But uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, no, it's cool. Hey, we got some house cleaning. Jason, Jason uh, Seamer, he's pulled into the uh, Mountain Madman. <laughs> Nineteen ninety nine <laughs> super chat. Thank you, Jason. That's right right awesome. That said, uh, we'll, we'll put that towards the poker run. How's that? There you go. That's what we'll do. So, there we go. We got some ideas too. We probably should announce them publicly, but uh... <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're gonna have some fun. Anyway, the uh, look at that view. This was just the. Basically, me sitting at the the common area inside the main lodge. I think it was about I don't know seven a.m., maybe six thirty a.m. last year. I just caught the sun sunrise, and uh, I think it was a sunrise, sunrise or sunset. I don't know, one or the what other. What the hell are you but, doing up that early? I want to know. I don't, oh, I get up early, man. So, but uh, yeah, no, just just another nice picture that everyone will see when they come up. So. That's cool. Bruce yep. Drew says, you're going to piss off the neighbors with that pipe, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Oh, I don't know what happened to that what slide. It's, it's a lot of everything there. Yeah. This one is the, that's the, that's going, coming out of Shining Tree. Uh, that's the sea trail, I think it is, right? Yeah. I think, Larry, yeah. And that's, that's, the, the, that's the third, that, that's the fourth bear, if you're wondering. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was just a picture of the, basically almost all the trail that you get from so the, you know, just North of Sudbury up to shining tree. Yep. Uh, it was absolutely phenomenal. Like it was, 
you know, 50 kilometer an hour speed limit on the OFSC trails. So, you know, you can't really speed that much, but, uh, <laughs> so yeah, right. Don't, <laughs> Moist Coast sledheads don't listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. I, I got, um, the pictures I sent you, Gary, you're going to see, uh, I'll be able to tell you what, uh, what time, what, what part of the year it was. Uh, are you okay, showing cool. any of those? The ones I sent yeah, I'm gonna sh I've got them all lined up. They're all queued up. Right on. Yeah, I'll, how I'll play. Snow, you, um, how, how much snow, Larry, does Sudbury area get in a year? Oh, man, that's a good question. That's a really well, good you, question. You don't really – a lot, though, right? Like, it's – does it does it compare with – it can't compare with Cochrane, obviously, but but do you know – like look at look at what Corey's standing in there. I mean, that's insane. That was four years ago, and that I I I want to say it was three and a half feet there. Oh, easily. for sure. Yeah, like <laughs> that was crazy. I had to get off and and step in it just to see how deep it was. And yeah, yeah. Now, what, what, well, happens, put it, put it... what you got to keep in mind too is when you ride in Sudbury, um, like if you're in the core around Sudbury, there are a lot of uh, you know black rock exposed. Um, and as soon as the sun hits it, it melts a lot quicker. The core of Sudbury, like we get a good amount of dumping, but nor do I, uh, an hour north of Sudbury. So I'm a half an hour north. And from my place, the back, I can start seeing the rolling hills behind my place, which is kind of like, uh, north of Cape Royal, Lake Guanapate area. And then it kind of flows down and towards like, you know, sportsmen's and all that stuff. And you're a higher, higher elevation and the snow is always double back there than what it is in town in the core yeah. of Sudbury. Remember yeah. us, remember us, Gary, last year when we went up, when I said we headed the South to French river and it was pretty weak. And then the day before that, I took Shannon up North and I said, you know, we went up to the wolf lookout and everything. The snow was double, like double the amount, just, Absolutely. just yeah. from the moonlight heading North. It was, it was crazy. We trailered to just the Kukagami Lake road. Yeah, and and dropped off there, and then just headed headed out that way, and it was crazy. The amount, the difference was 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 unbelievable. So yeah, well, well, here's the deal. The last year we had the the beer spa um, weekend for Family Day weekend. It poured rain, trails closed. We pulled the plug on the event. We drove past that area to get to Sudbury. The same day we would have been going to the beer spa, and this is what we're looking at right here. You know, like it's, yeah. it's insane. They didn't skip a beat. And that's why, that's why this year was, that's the thing Corey we go, said. We, we had gotta, to go further. We got to yeah. do Sudbury because it's, it's, nobody can guarantee snow, but your odds are a lot better than, than, than not. Yep. So, oh, this, I know this picture, Corey. Yeah. This was just, uh, when we were crossing. So four years ago when I was up there, I went up with a few buddies and, uh, we looked down off the French river bridge and there's actually, if you look close, there's people ice climbing, um, which was really cool. So that was just a picture of, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see. There's one guy at the top, yeah. and then there's one guy at the bottom there. So that yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. So That is very yeah. cool. Yeah. So it's pretty wild. And that, that ice wall was like that last year, too. So it must be a constant flow. Like you said, the rock heats up, melts, and then it refreezes, right? Yeah, absolutely. This, I know that is. Well, yeah, it well it's it well it was Rockies. Um yeah. now it's hard I can't even actually pronounce the name of it's the called the uh, Hi Hiawatha. Hiawatha, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they're so yeah, this was a famous, I guess kind of a you can see there's a dragon head there kind of in the back. I, I don't know if that's Rocky or what, but uh that's Rocky, the rock nest monster. There you go. Uh, on Lake Wanapate. <laughs> so a little bit of history of Lake Wanapate. It was formed by a meteor. And yeah, that's uh yeah, Rocky. Yeah. You can see he's, he's back sign. in there. You can't yeah, really see him. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, it was formed by a meteor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Lake Wanapate was formed by a meteor. There are places in that lake uh, that your your fish finder, your depth finder goes blank. Uh, there are so many deep spots in that lake that no fish finder can even find the bottom. Wow. Uh, very scary lake. Uh, I've had a, a buddy of mine and his two daughters uh, got uh, stuck in the middle of the lake on a bass fishing boat and both all three of them drowned. Uh, oh, very nasty lake. Uh, the wintertime, the uh, pressure cracks 
uh, you know, can reach four or five feet high with, you know, uh, in between three to four feet wide open in between. It's, it's a lake that you really have to pay respect to it. Um, but uh, this is the north end of Lake Wanapate. It's uh, in the Wanapate First Nations. And this was known for many, many years. The guy, uh, Rocky um, uh, Rock, uh, their last name, <clears throat> and uh, his nickname was Rocky. Uh, he had uh, built the place and uh, it's, on, uh, it's on native land. Uh, and they last year, uh, I guess, you know, through COVID and all that stuff, they just kind of shut her down. They didn't have the, uh, the gas, gas was open. Um, the gas was still running. Yeah. That was, it was a good thing. Uh, but it's been in the process for probably about the past six months and the new owners just took over. Uh, the owner, the lady is an actual certified, uh, cook slash chef. Sweet. Uh, in the food industry for many, many years. Um, and it's called Hiawatha's, uh, which unfortunately, it's almost like that three bear lodge. Uh, it's always going to be Rockies. You got think, it. Right? There's going to be people riding there for the next 20 years that are still going to call it Rockies. Um, you know, uh, and you know, uh, all for them, I wish them all the success. Uh, but I'll tell you, man, that's a snowmobiling destination oh. spot that if you're in Sudbury, Packed. You are going to end up there because you're going to need gas and food. And that's one of the only spots you can stop. And that's open to the public. Yeah. yeah and, good. and going back on what you're saying about the pressure cracks, it's uh, I was blown away by a man last year and I, I do have it in the video and we actually drive over one, the trail narrows, like it's all staked on the lake. Yeah. And, and then it narrows right down and you go through this little two foot window across a pressure crack through it and back up and in my video they look like 12 inch snow piles these things are four feet tall like yeah, yeah they're big it's the insane whole way that, too yeah there is no speed limit on the lake you can you can run 140 miles an hour if you're subtle do it but on that lake there you want to make sure you know where you're going because you can see you're running alongside this crack though for and this lake's not smile small it's massive and it's it's just a sight to see man like holy you just, like you said, respect because that's the power of nature, right? Yeah. Larry, when you come out at the, uh, oh, geez, look at this guy. Hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> I love it. Pure that's Country 91.7. You remember that? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Oh, clear the day, buddy. Absolutely. Yeah, right. I, do. I, I recognized your, uh, your sticker on your sled. And, I'm, and you know, I said, I said, uh, I used to watch you down at the ranch and yeah. And then the rest of that, that, that was too funny, man. You come over and, you know, you know, in Sudbury, I'll be riding. It's like, uh, cause I got, you know, rewrapping the sled this year. We're going black on black. And anyway, I got my decal on it and, you know, people say, Hey, Larry, Mary, what's happening? You know, we start chatting. But as soon as you come over to me, you know, and you mentioned that you used to see me at the ranch, it was like, what? <laughs> I was like yeah. hey, that's awesome. But you know, well, that, it's great. That and then remember you. Well, I was talking. We were talking about uh, when you um, crashed my friend's pig roast, Alex and Jen. Remember up in the state? Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. She. We. We still chat and stuff. And yeah. She. She's no. She. She's always. She always talks about you still. So I don't know if you're. You're in. Because uh, I think they used to go to the ranch too and stuff back in the day. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was cool. Yeah. So, that was cool. Absolutely, yeah. buddy. So that's pretty awesome. I, I dug go. that picture up and snuck it in there. I, love <laughs> I knew it, Corey would like that's it. Right, but that, right at the top that's of Wolf a, Mountain right there. Wolf Mountain, yeah. Yeah, yep. and that, that that's the picture that uh that um we laughed about that and, and they said about meeting Larry Barry up there, and I'm like, and I had never heard of you before, and I'm like, it sounds like a lounge singer and stuff, and, <laughs> and then we watched your videos. <laughs> oh yeah, like because and I didn't know your last name's Barry Alt, right? And that's where you, they probably called you burial all through school. And that's the thing. That's probably why it's stuck. And I'm thinking, why doesn't he have like a, an epic, cool country name? Like Eric <laughs> church or. <laughs> hey, uh, well, my real last name is French and it's pronounced barrio. Uh, in English, it's pronounced burial. But there's too many people that pronounce the I-A-U-L-T at the end of it. So I get a lot of burial parole um yeah. so it sounds it's burial so i'm thinking you know like how do i change it because i really didn't want to change my last name because it was pretty cool 
Um, yeah. My name is Larry Barrio. And then uh, when I played, I was playing in Calgary one year. Oh, man, it's going to be 18 years ago. Uh, and on the radio station, they were announcing me playing at this festival or whatever. And they, they called me Larry Burial from Ontario. Oh, and geez. that's been my nickname ever since. Every time I'd see somebody from out west, it's like, hey, you're Larry Burial from Ontario. And it's like, ah, that's cool, man. So it kind of stuck. That's and you know, <laughs> it goes from there. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. No, it's good. But, and that's the thing when, when we, when I dug deeper into, into, who you are and what you do and and the fact you're always out on the trails and i posted that video in in the comments it was i posted a video with with you in it like your music in it and i gave you credit and stuff and someone put in the comments legend has it that on a moonlit night up on wolf mountain you can hear larry Barrio. <laughs> It's in it. the comments. I'll I'll dig uh, it up and read it. I'll I'll read the actual it. comment, but yeah, it's something to that effect. And I went, oh dude, this guy knows you, man. <laughs> like he knows he knows what Larry Barry was all about. But that there was it is Vince. right there. Like was that Vince? That was, that was Vince from Beaver Tail Toys. That's who it was. Yeah. yeah. That's but cool. Look at him rocking out there. That's wicked. Do you That's still do it. the stuff with what a rot? Is it what a ride, Larry? Is that yeah, so um, what a ride is an affiliate company that is hired by Ontario Tourism okay. to do a lot of their marketing and videos. Um, so when we were uh doing the affiliation with Ontario Tourism, uh, I was working with the marketing group, What a Ride. So then we were uh, after about three years working with Ontario Tourism, it was in the process of writing a new song. And I wanted to write it basically this one here because you've heard my song, No Guts, No Glory, which is a really gearhead, uh, you know, diehard type of song. And this one here, I wanted to write a song uh, about all, everything about, you know, sea uh, dues to uh, motorcycles, um, you know, quads, side by side, snowmobiles, mud, snow, the whole kit. <clears throat> and while we were writing it, I reached out to uh, Mike, uh, which is the, the president of uh, What A Ride, and asked him if it would be all right if I used the, his company name as the name of my song and Ontario Tourism. And uh, yeah, they absolutely loved it. They jumped on board, and that's where the name came up. Nice. Right on. Nice. Did, you, did you do the uh, St. Did you used to do the St. Charles ATV ride too? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've done that one probably about five or six times. Yeah. Uh, we did some video shoot part of the St. Charles Mud Bog that we used uh, and some stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's quite the event. That's huge. Is it done that's now cool. or they still do it? They held one uh, in May last year. They oh, they did? Oh, two cool. years. <clears throat> and I, I didn't get a chance to make it out to it this year. Um, but I heard the, uh, the turnout was awesome and everybody just more really, really excited that it's back again. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. cool. Awesome. Here, we're going to get through some Larry pictures here. So. I'm going to grab a beer. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, you grab All a right. beer. You're, you're lost, whatever you're missing here. So That's it, buddy. <laughs> so this is on uh, Whitson Lake. This is actually taken uh, right in front of my house. Nice. Uh, we just bought, a, just bought a pontoon boat this year, 21 foot uh, Prince Craft. It's got a 50 Merc on it. And... Uh, Pontoon boat's perfect for Whitson. Uh, it's a big enough lake, but a lot of rocks, a lot of shoals. You got to know where you're going. And uh, it's more of a, one of those where you just kind of enjoy and just go out and, with the family and friends and just kind of tour around a lake, man. I love it. Oh, that's a way to I do the lake, right? Sea -Doo. Yeah, I got rid of my sea -Doo into into that because the sea -Doo is just one of those lakes where um, a sea -Doo is awesome. You can go to trail and get to different lakes. You know, head down in the Skulkas. Um, or get into some lakes where there's some rivers and some streams that lead on to other lakes, and this one doesn't. So I had my sea for three years and finally retired it and got into a pontoon. Oh, this is part of this the is... sandbanks. That was, yeah, that was this year's. I can tell it's this year because of the tent oh. that we had set up in the background. You and tell by the you tell the... by the blue bikini. Exactly. That's how I can tell. <laughs> 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 me too <laughs> uh, me too 
That's awesome. So this is on the northeast end of uh, Lake Winnipeg. It's right at the mouth of the North River. Uh, and Rockies, which is now Hiawatha's, is actually maybe about five kilometers down the lake uh, on the same kind of side. Uh, the They call it the Sandbanks. Uh, and that's where we obviously got the name from. It was just, it's uh, it's known as the Sandbanks. It's not the official name on uh, Google. If you were to look it up, it's just a nickname that people call Sandbanks. And you can see the background, the sand cliffs flows into the water. And you can probably walk, I would say, at least 100 to 150 yards. And you're still waist deep in beach sand. It's crazy. It's beautiful. That's awesome. So they bring yeah. a barge out there for you to play on, and how do you get power? Yeah, is it just generators? Uh, so I got uh, we got a seven thousand watt generator. I bring out. Uh, we sing on a floating barge. We bring all the speakers across. Run the power with the uh, the PA system. Uh, I raise a lot of sponsorship money to hold the event, and uh, I got to get now because the event was growing so big. Uh, past couple of years, got to get the liability insurance involved and. Uh, I've always invited the police and MNR uh, first responders out to the event every single year. And I'm proud to say after six years, nobody's ever been charged uh, at the event. You know, everybody really respects everything. Uh, there's no garbage left behind. Uh, if they're having drinks, they're in plastic cups. Uh, I was going to say those ladies drink. are drinking uh, pop, right? Or water there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. red solo cups. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Yetis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, Gary. We're gonna get the Baja up there next summer, man. We got it. Oh man, it's five oh, yeah, the Baja. Well. We, we can we can afford the gas on that one. Yeah, those those, yeah. those women right there will be all over it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we can do better well, than my, that. Uh, we can do better than my that. personal truck. Uh, so I got a Chevy Silverado. It's a 2022. Um, lease it for a couple of years. Um, that wasn't my truck that I had ordered. I ordered a three quarter ton, 6.6 liter gas, uh, but it was backlogged due to the computer modules and my truck was still, my lease was up on my last one. And, uh, I got into this beautiful, nice 20 inch wheels on it. Uh, just a really gorgeous truck, did a custom wrap on it. And, uh, I'll be ordering my new three quarter ton, uh, in the summer, another, uh, Chevy, uh, 2,500. Sweet. Gary, you should get your picture on the side of that, eh? I know I could. I could be facing Larry the other way. I could, you've got room <laughs> on the front fender there. <laughs> Me. Right on. Yeah. No, it's cool. Got the thumbs up. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to plug? Do you want to plug what your day job is, or 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 what? No, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I started uh, to make three years in March. So I work for Southside Chevrolet in Sudbury. A uh, good buddy of mine, Dennis Lozo, uh, friend of mine, did a lot of snowmobiling together, and. Uh, uh, two and a half years ago, we were sledding and he had asked me, he says, man, he says, we're all your marketing and everything you do in your music nice. industry. You should come and sell trucks for me. And I kind of, you know, I've been self-employed for over 30 years, um, my whole life. So I said, you know, as long as you're flexible with my weekend work, you know, if I got a tour and stuff like that, I said, absolutely. And, uh, I took my on Vic courses down in Toronto, wrote my exam in Ottawa. I started second week of March. And third week of March, COVID hit, and I lost all my concerts for two years. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise that I started selling trucks. And um, I love it. It's absolutely, it's, it's awesome, man. Uh, the only regret that I have is I should have started selling trucks years ago. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> yeah, cool. Nice. Because nice. it doesn't, imply, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't uh, conflict with uh, my tour dates and, you know, snowmobiling, riding, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. I love it. Sweet. You need a truck? Go see uh, Larry at Southside. I tried. Chevrolet. I tried last Good. week. GMC. Didn't I, Larry? There you go. Yeah, I was. Then you buy everything? <laughs> no, you didn't have what I needed. <laughs> That's a problem, right? Is is supply chain. Wow. That's, it, man. That's huge. I'll get you to help me get out of my RAM when I'm ready. Okay, bud? Okay, man. I'll help you out. Yeah. 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 So. so this picture is taken, this is on Long Lake. This is uh, the south end of Sudbury. And this was on our way back from uh, Killarney. That was, see which sleds in the picture? Yeah, that was last year. I can tell by the sleds. Because uh, there's a couple of people who bought new sleds. That was last year. That was coming back the uh, third weekend of February. That was on a Sunday. 
uh, coming back again on Long Lake and Sudbury. Beautiful spot. Nice lake uh, to cross. Uh, no pressure cracks on that thing, man. So it's just a really nice lake to, uh, you know, get to point A to point B for sure. What are your some some of your favorite spots in Sudbury to go? Great like where, question. If we, if we were to take some of these, you know, people on the group, what I know the Wolf Lookout's usually a good spot, but uh, anything else we could show and check out? Absolutely. I would suggest. So this picture here is taken. Uh, this is north of Hanmer. So you got um, Hanmer's kind of towards north, a little bit northwest of Sudbury. Then you got Cape Rail. And then you got Kukagami Lake, which is towards Portsmouth on the east end. So this one here is heading up uh, north of Hanmer. Um, and we're just parked on a beautiful pond that we usually just go out and boat. Uh, know the pond very well. There's no dead stump sticking out of it. It's not a deep pond, nice frozen. So if you want to do some powder riding, there's so many ponds up there. Uh, one of the great rides is heading up uh, Trail 56, which is north of Hanmer. And you take that all the way up to the C-111D and you head west and you go all the way to Cartier. That is one awesome run. Hmm. And Cartier, uh, if you were is to Is that take, the Cartier loop, they call it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you were to take uh, the 144 on the way to Timmins, you would pass Cartier. You would pass okay. uh, uh, the restaurant and the gas station that's right there. Hmm. And uh, you can continue that loop, either come back or you can do that loop and you head south and you hit like Fairbanks Lake and head up and towards Chelmsford and back in the sun. Is that the, but, uh, yeah. is that the windy, is that windy lake? Windy lake? That's right. Hotel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right Sweet. On. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to cool. have to look at the ITG, all the, uh, the, the uh, Wisco when you, and you're coming up, uh, download the OFSC.ON.CAA Ghost Snowmobiling Ontario app. And you'll see all the trails and stuff. They're posted there. It'll show the limitations and stuff once you uh, you get at that. For American Sledders, I, I've already told uh, Justin this. Uh, a three-day pass, I believe, was 135 bucks. It it will go on sale on December 2nd. That's when they'll post the prices. It might go up a couple bucks. It's 45 bucks a day. And so two days, 90. And if you want to ride for three days, it's 145. If you want to come to Canada more than once, then go on by midnight tonight and buy your a full season permit for 200 bucks. Exactly. I mean, you can't go wrong. Right. So, yeah. But I love the snow in that last picture. I don't know. We talked, well, I guess we did talk a bit about that, but here we had a concert here. This looks like it's winter. Is it? No, nope. this one here. Uh, that's a summer concert. That was in St. Charles. Cool. Uh, which is, uh, right around the French River area, uh, if you're, it's in between Sudbury and North Bay. So, nice. uh, yeah, that we did. A, you do a lot of local. Concert. You do a lot of local concerts, but how far have you gone? Like how? Uh, the further, what's further the, what's some of the, the is, memorable? So through my Rocktown video, I had a company by the, by the name of Red Path Mining. Uh, they had sponsored uh, part of my music video, Valet, and all that. And long story short, uh, Red Path are a mining company located. They got offices around the world. And uh, two years ago, uh, 2019, just before COVID, they flew me and my band out to Indonesia. And we performed in a little, uh, it's on an island, uh, 6,000 feet up into the mountains, a little place called Temba Gampura. And we performed uh, four shows. We were there for a week. Um, and uh, that was spectacular man i've played uh the yukon uh I've played every province across canada except for newfoundland and northwest territories wow so i've been you very privileged be... i've crossed canada i think 12 times in my tour bus and i've been to banff alberta 24 times to perform so That's uh awesome. been to a lot of places man nashville yeah. played in nashville uh, didn't play, recorded two albums in Nashville, uh, played at the Milwaukee NASCAR race. Uh, that's where I Sweet. opened up for Tim McGraw. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, we did. I've, I've been, uh, and I've toured Canada a lot, um, which I'm pretty proud of because we have such a beautiful country and it's just absolutely stunning. Every province is so different. Yeah, that's cool. So are these album covers that we're looking at here, or are they just uh, 
This is what you look like on it. Is this, was this yeah. this afternoon? <laughs> uh, that was that was actually in the uh, in the fall of last year. Uh, no, it was it, uh, no, it was in the spring. It was in the spring of last year. Uh, just down the road from my place, a good friend of mine, Kim Bogery, owns uh, a, a farm with horses and everything. And we went out there. I hired a photographer. We needed some new photos. We shot all day. Uh, the one on the left with the red background, that's a red barn, actually, uh, you know, with the uh, with the fence opened against the barn. And it just kind of suited. It was like, it's just a cool photo shoot. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, that one there I've been using as a promo shot. And then the one to the right-hand side, uh, we did a bunch of cowboy pictures because uh, ever since I've been a kid, I've always wanted to be a cowboy. And so I rode horses that afternoon and took some shots. And it was pretty cool. I loved it, man. That's it was cool. a great photo shoot. One of my finest photo shoots ever so far. What do you uh, what do you play? What's your what's your brand of guitar? Do you have a preference? Uh, I got a guitar that was uh, I bought from my uncle, uh, my uncle Vic, and he bought this guitar brand new in the 1950s. When I bought it from him, it's a Yamaha acoustic six string. Uh, there wasn't a scratch on it. It was actually in pristine, pristine condition. Uh, and today it's, uh, well, I beat the crap out of it. Actually, it's right beside me here. Uh Oh, here we go. We're going to get a song, Gary. I don't know if you can zoom in on this, but, uh, you see the whole, Hey, hey, hang on. Yeah, I can get you. Hold on. Oh, shoot. I removed them. Hold on. I'll put you here. There we go. Wow. That's been beat up. I wore a hole right through it. Um, this is all caused. Uh, all down here. This is all caused by my guitar pick. Jesus. And that's a hole right through it, right there. Up here, it's caused by my guitar pick. I <laughs> uh, like I play aggressive, and then the back of it is worn out, and that's from uh, right there. That's worn out from my belt buckle. <laughs> well, I was I thought it was rubbing on something else. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's been, this thing's been right, ladies. I, I said, I showed, to, um, I showed it to my uncle one year and he was just floored. He was just like, Oh my God, man, I can't believe you just, you beat the crap out of that. And I've had musicians, um, you know, look at my guitar going, I, I can't believe you played it. It must sound like crap. And they pick it up and play it going, this is one of the best sounding acoustic guitars I've ever heard. Like, and it's still it's got a hole in it. And yeah, I keep playing. So yeah. And then I got about four electric guitars that, uh, that I'll play. Uh, my main instruments on stage, uh, I would say probably half and half are acoustic guitar and harmonica. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, I love yeah, the I love harmonica. Playing. It's something I never played. But uh, Yeah, I cool. love playing harmonica. That's pretty cool. Yeah, maybe really maybe if it. you're maybe if you're generous, you'll you'll play us out tonight. There you go. On the show. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. I can definitely do a, a song for you guys when it goes off the show for sure. Yeah, that's or or now it doesn't matter to me, and we we don't have to be picky on it. <laughs> we don't have to argue about it. Hey, exactly. There's another good shot there. That's cool. Yeah, that was that was one of my favorite shots. Um, you know, I just I got my head down, and it's just just kind of a cool cowboy shot, man. I got my chaps on and everything, and just uh, I just love the whole vibe of the picture. It's you know, it kind of uh, uh, showed my little childhood and you know fantasy is a, you know being a cowboy my whole life and never had a chance to be a cowboy but that was the closest i got there that's cool you haven't you're living the dream you're having fun anyway so this yeah, picture you know looks what? like it was shot through a bus window or something is that right it's a it's one of your concerts it Everybody's is having it was a just the in. the person that took the photos uh she kind of cropped it in like that to uh uh make it kind of a, a cool thing that was uh, this summer up in Smooth Rock Falls. That was part of the Smooth Rock Truck Fest that nice. we performed at. We were, we were the headliner that night. Uh, and obviously, you can see the arena was packed. And we had a great show. Just an amazing turnout, man. It was wicked. Really cool show. There's another. There's there's an idea of the, the, uh, the, the Sandbanks Music Festival yeah. right here. That's I'm up on stage right now doing a selfie, and just to give you an idea of the people that turn out for this, and you know, um, you gotta you gotta account the people that are on the left and on the right of that picture, and it's just a jam. Um, yeah, there, there's we some have to make it this year. There's, there's probably someone with a thousand people. 
Someone with a pitcher of apple juice there swinging it up there. Yeah, yeah. It's they awesome. do have apple juice. Looks like piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's bush. It's bush light. It's bush lot. Is what bush light. What bush, bush latte. Bush <laughs> latte. Bush latte. That's right. Oh yeah, that's wicked. That looks like such a fun time, man. Ah, it's wicked, man. Yeah, it's it's really something else. And and kids and you know kids and uh, I know moms and teenagers, dads and mom and dads and, and I had uh, and one lady. Yeah, one lady this summer. I had to go and give her a t-shirt and a keychain because uh, she was sitting in a an, in a chair in the water, and I went over and saw her and I introduced myself and chatted and. And uh, she told me that she just turned 82 that weekend. Oh, my God. <laughs> and nice. she had to go out and see the show. It was just, yeah, it's just so cool. It's just a whole variety. I'd love to go. Cooler. I'd love to go. Yeah. Oh, it'd be wicked, man. It'd be wicked. And good music, too, I heard. Oh, I heard awesome. the, guy plays, the guy playing on stage isn't that bad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it just you, or do you, is there other bands, too, or what, how does that work? I usually get uh, another band to open up uh, our show for us. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's really cool. This picture here was on. Uh, it's on the east end of Sudbury. And it's called Lake Panage, hmm. and Lake Panage, uh, very long lake as well too. Uh, you, know, you gotta be aware in this winter. This lake can have uh, either ice pressure cracks or the majority of snow drifts. Uh, a lot of snow drifts. Um, and this was on a way coming back from Killarney, I believe, or Manitoulin and Island, one of them. Uh, you end up on that same lake, whether you're coming back from Killarney or Manitoulin. So uh, a nice stretch, man. If you want to open up the throttle, that's that's like to be on. Nice. That was taken. Uh, it was a concert here in Sudbury at the Grand Theater. Um, it was uh, one of these, these spots that used to be actually a theater where they played movies at one point. Um, and they turned it into a bar many years ago, and it always been on my bucket list to play there. And we played there uh, two years ago, and um, you know we probably had 500 people come out to the show, and that was awesome. It's just a great show, man. I love it. Nice, looks good. Do you own the lighting, or is that something they set up for you, or, or do you travel with all that? No, I don't uh, own any uh, lighting whatsoever. Uh, when we do a tour with the the bus, uh, sometimes we have to supply. Uh, some sound and some lights, depending where we're playing. Then uh, I'll pull. I got a custom trailer to pull behind my tour bus, and uh, we bring the lighting crew and sound crew with us. Just go, man. Plug and play. Sweet. Give us a little story on the fire hall in. Uh, is it Capriel? Cap Capriel, yeah. Capriel. Yeah, yeah. The, you used uh, to, I, I went in there one, a couple four years ago, I think. Yeah, the firehouse. And, uh, the firehouse is it the firehouse. Yeah. 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 And I went in there and I saw all your uh, stuff on the wall and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the stage is set somebody, up when we were in there. Somebody last owned, year. It was somebody you know obviously owned it, or do you play there, or what's the deal? Uh, it was a friend of mine that owned the place. Uh, he ended up selling it uh, to uh, some new people. Uh, this lady uh, by the name of Julie that uh, she owns it now. Um, and um, I haven't been in there. Again, they've been closed during COVID, and that's usually my snowmobile hangout. So I'm not sure if they still have uh, uh, my guitar hanging up there, the picture of my guitar and my my poster name and all the stuff. So uh, uh, but, I don't think yeah, they do, eh, Gary? We were there last year, and they I don't. It, it had Larry Berrio stuff up there. It had Larry Berrio oh, cool. stuff in there. Yeah, oh, oh right yeah. on. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah they're, they're awesome, man. That's in Cape Royal. Yeah, great yeah. Uh, snowmobile um, destination spot as well, too, man. Very cool. Yeah. No, it is cool. We went there last year, and there's gas nearby and stuff for get, to get you home. And yeah. yeah so so this cool. picture here was taken on the the official coldest day I've ever snowmobiled in my life. Oh. This was in Timmins. Uh, we rode up to Timmins, my buddy and I, uh, John, my best friend John. We trailered up, pulled into Timmins on a Friday night. And when we pulled in the parking lot, it was around 11 o'clock at night. And no word of a lie, it was minus 52 without the wind chill. Wow. It That's broke cool. the record. It broke the record in Timmins for the past 50 years. That was the coldest night that Timmins had ever recorded. It was minus 52 without the wind chill. Hmm. Wow. You don't we even want to have your skin well, exposed. 
We ran to the motel room because it was that cold. You get to your motel room, your nose is freezing. And that day there, the only thing that saved us is that there was no wind and there was no clouds that day. It was a full sunshiny day and it was minus 48 we rode that day. Yeah. It's crazy cold. Absolutely insane cold. Sounds like Kirkland Lake a bit, eh? Yeah, Kirkland Lake was only minus 40, day. though. Yeah, it's minus, minus, 40, minus I 47, I think, when I got up. 47 yeah. or 42. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was in the oh, middle of the afternoon. It was minus 48. That's crazy. No, it was the coldest snowmobile I've ever done. How long ago was that? Was that last year? Or? That was two years ago. Two years ago. Oh, yeah. Wow. I still remember starting the diesel in, in that minus 40, whatever it was. And, and it was like, it had no oil in it. It was like, it was blocks of Frozen. wood as pistons. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it wasn't plugged. It wasn't plugged in overnight. It was surprised it actually went. Well, we had our sleds parked in my trailer uh, and we pulled them out. Mine wouldn't start four stroke. There's no way that thing started. Uh, my buddy's uh, has got the, the ZR6000 Articat two stroke. Pulled it out. Uh, instead of using the electric start, you just cranked it. Cranked it about four or five times. It started. Uh, mine, we had to park it in the sun, and I had my battery booster with me and everything, and it took probably at least an hour. We had to blow some heat on it and everything just to start it. It was insane cool. Hmm. Now, the skidoos the skidoos would fire right up. Oh, they, they, they fire right up? Yeah, they fire right up. They don't oh, even know what's older. They're made. Well, they, they're made in. They're made in Quebec, right? Well, so, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're right. You know, because all the skidoos started there. They were all parked in a heated garage overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Oh yeah. Here comes all the jokes, eh? That's right. This is the. This is, the, the, uh, this is about uh, 15 minutes away from my place. Uh, it's called Valley's Days that we performed at. Um, and we did this show about four years ago. I headlined uh, the evening that night. It was just so cool, man, to play in your hometown. It was awesome. Yeah, that that is that would be great, right? Yeah, you're playing in your hometown. Big outside concert, uh, sold out. It's you know you're headlining the show. It's, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty sweet. That's cool. Look at the crowd in this photo. Like this is this is like what you see at name your top 10 concert you know what i mean it is jam-packed for miles so this is the largest country music festival in canada and it's based out of cavendish beach music festival in oh, pei yeah 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 that's cavendish that's uh i'll tell you man uh i've been to performed at boots and hearts uh performed calgary stampede um the east coast they're just unbelievable people friendly uh hardly any garbage the no fights it's just they're just awesome people man what a beautiful festival to be a part of uh it's sponsored by bell media it's called the cavendish beach music festival unbelievable i got the uh, chance to play the main stage there and it was just yeah something else how long what year was that Freaking cool uh again 2019 just before oh. covid hmm. yeah summer 2019 yeah. And we go from – it's kind of weird that the way you placed out these these slides, the picture before was the coldest I've ever uh, – snowmobiled Snow at minus 48. Yeah. This was the hottest concert I have ever played at in my life. And it was, I think – I think it was plus 38 that day. Uh, and we played as around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and I remember halfway throughout the set, I had to, after the end of the song, I called one of the guys on the side stage. I had already drank two bottles of water and he brought me two more and I jugged them down in front of the audience. And I said, that, I'm going to pass out. It doesn't even look hot. like you're breaking a sweat there, Larry. No. Oh man. It was no. hot. Oh, there's you yeah. warm. <laughs> That's good. Here, there's another cold picture to cool you down on the can am outland that, okay, that yeah. thing was gnarly i love that thing with the track with the, with the this tracks, was part yeah. of a shoot we did with uh ontario tourism and this was in elliott lake at the dunlop lake lodge uh we went out uh stayed the night uh we did some uh some ice fishing that day and uh we rode around on these quads with these the tracks on them and these things were gnarly man you know they set me up with the climb suits and everything man it was it was pretty cool and <laughs> 
That was awesome. And that was that my friend Shelby from uh, Backcountry Sports Media that was doing that. Yes. Yeah. Right. Shelby on. Mahan. Yeah. Shelby Mahan. Yeah. Shelby seen... Mahan. Backcountry. Yeah. Backcountry yeah. Media. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, Shelby. We did. We did a lot of uh, stuff together, man. She's awesome. She's such she's a great. cool gal, and um, yeah, she, she loves her motorsports, man. Oh, she's just. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Cool we had her on the show. We had her on the show uh, as a guest in the in the summer. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, she's really good. But uh, yeah, I was wondering about that because they're all BRP products too. Yeah. And oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. Hang on a second. Um, she's from Quebec. She drives monster trucks. Really? Oh. Right on. Yeah. And oh my God, she's going to shoot me if she watches this video. I'm trying to think of her name out loud. I was just about to grab my phone and look it up, but I'm, I'm using my phone. Uh, yeah, no, that's cool though. I, I'm going to think of it. So she's from yeah, Montreal that's... and, yeah. um, she's actually you know, a full time. That's what she does. She's a professional monster truck driver. Uh, so I had the opportunity to spend, uh, the weekend with her. We did some ice fishing. We did a video. It's not Cynthia oh. Goche, is it? Cynthia Goche. That's what it is. Thank you very much for nice. saving my ass. What, what yeah. truck does she drive, Corey? What truck is it? Uh, well, she used here. to be with the Mutt. Uh, yeah, the Monster the, Mutt. I, Cause I remember monster my son mutt. was, Drew's probably gonna be and, embarrassed to tell. He was a nut over, over the, the Monster oh, yeah. so Monster Mutt was and, the one, yeah. And now she's with Caterpillar. She's got the Sweet. Caterpillar dump truck looking um, uh, machine. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Cynthia Gucci. What a sweetheart, man. She's just a really cool gal from Montreal. And uh, she's just been touring the country. Uh, that's what she does. Professional uh, monster truck driver. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah man. There's the there's the there bus. it is there's so, the bus. So when we fill the lodge and we fill the tower, we're gonna park Larry's bus there. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I, I'll I stay. want in there. I'll give yeah, up my room. Exactly. <laughs> so that's yeah. a uh, that's a 1984 Prevo, uh, 42 feet, and I got my trailer hooked up to the back of it. And last fall, because I lost two years of shows, we weren't doing anything with it, and I got a good offer on the bus, and I sold it last fall. Oh, no. uh, but I just bought a, another one and I'm probably going to be getting it next week or the week after it's coming up from the States. Uh, uh, another 42 feet. Uh, it's all blacked out uh, completely. Uh, so we'll have it ready for the spring. We're going to be hitting the road with it. So That's I'm pretty cool. cool. I'm pretty excited about getting my new coach. Yeah. Well, th this thing is, is it old? Like, is this a classic one we're looking at? Cause it has that say, old you classic say 84? look. That's 84? a 1984. Uh, yeah. It's a classic for sure. That's yeah, she sweet. was fully redone yeah. and a five speed standard double clutch. Uh, do you drive it or do you have a driver or how does that work? So I got my license uh, since I've been a kid. I always wanted to drive transports and um, I drive the bus a lot because I love to drive it, but I do have a driver uh, that drives for me. So after I'm done a show, I'm just pooped. And, you know, if we're going to Prince Edward Island to long hauls, we'll share driving. Uh, along the way if i got something short i'll drive it myself i just i love driving it uh but uh yeah i got my buddy steph uh, grimard uh that drives the bus for me pretty well the majority of the time and hey, gary the coolest, the coolest gary. thing he's a heavy oh, diesel mechanic too there you go that's cool oh that helps right if you have any problems wow. on the road he can he can fix you up hey gary do you think we could talk larry into taking us to heydays next year oh that would be awesome in the bus <laughs> in the tour bus you got I've it. Talked, that would be... I've talked to Shelby about uh, getting me out to Heydays. The only thing about, um, oh man, I want to go to Heydays like crazy. It's the um, it's the work permits that you have to get, and what you got to do is you got to show a minimum of, I believe it's two or four shows in a year that you're going to be doing in the U.S. You have to have signed contract, everything in advance. Uh, to be able to cross the border to do a show. But can't you just take the, Oh, we don't want you to work. Just, we want you to hang out with us and take yeah, us we in just the want bus. To, you just want us to take us in the bus. <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't want well, to work when you're down there. What the hell? You know, you know what? I'm in for that. I'm in for that. <laughs> we'll just take the bus. There we go. Okay. I'll, I'll cool. pitch in for some diesel for sure. That's right. All right. Did you see the price of diesel? <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I drive That's a true. diesel. I know. Okay. <laughs> oh, sure. 
It's coming down. It's it's going down. Is it though? <laughs> no, it, man. Nothing ever goes down. Fuel is the only thing that the more of it you use, the more expensive it gets. Yeah, I know. Stupid. it. What the heck? So there I we are. Try and the, say that uh, name. It's called Tembagampura. Where's that? And that's that's in Indonesia. Oh, that's where I performed. Uh, there's we're about about sixty two hundred feet up in a rainforest mountain. Uh, it's the largest gold mine in the world. Um, and uh, we were sent there by Red Path Mining to perform. We did four shows. Uh, we were there for an entire week. Um, unbelievable. There's rainforest, mountains. Um, you're, when they say you're in a different part of the world where you are, you're at the other end of the world. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's a, a trip of a lifetime. That's cool. Neat to see the world and do what you love, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, part of the water ride program, uh, the some very good friends of mine, uh, Carl and uh, Helen Patouin, which are the owners of um, uh, the company that has the rights to sell CF Moto across Canada. Uh, oh, nice. Their story, good product. it's awesome product, man. Uh, I know it's Chinese made. Uh, they're growing more and more across Canada. Uh, not to bash any other products whatsoever by any means. This one here, there it's probably about five thousand dollars cheaper than any other brand that's out there. It's the only brand that comes with signal lights, hazards, uh, four point harness seats, not five, but a four point harness seat. They come with um, automatically aggressive tires, aluminum alloy wheels, uh, tilt steering, and a five year warranty. Like nobody's got it, so. They're doing really well. Uh, I remember talking to Carl and Ellen, and um, they're based out of just outside of Sherbrooke, Quebec. Very French, have a hard time speaking English. And they sold their house, and they used all the profits that they had out of the house to fly to China to uh, convince CF Moto that they were the right people to be the representatives for CF Moto in Canada. Not in Quebec, but in Canada. They would not accept anything else except for having the rights in Canada. And uh, they put everything on the line, sold everything they had, and uh, they got two awesome boys, uh, and they got the rights for a CF Moto right across Canada, and they worked their asses off. And, you know, hats off to them for bringing, uh, you know, uh, another cool product into uh, into Canada. That's cool. Yeah, good story. Yeah, yeah very cool story. It's I, awesome. I've never, heard that, I've never heard that angle of it before, that's for sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's them, uh, for sure, man. They worked. And Jesus. this is uh, my wife and I. Uh, I performed up in Beaver Creek, uh, Yukon, which is the furthest western city in Canada. And I always thought it was Victoria, but it isn't. It's actually Beaver Creek, and they're oh, exactly nice. one kilometer. They're exactly one kilometer away from the Alaskan border. Uh, so we ended up there and formed in Beaver Creek. We did two shows. We were there for a week. Uh, and we ended up going into uh, Alaska. Uh, that's my wife and I. And wow, they flew us by airplanes over the uh, the glaciers. And, yeah, just a cool experience overall. Just unbelievable. Did did you stop on a glacier and get uh, get ice for vodka drinks? I, I had a buddy that did that in Alaska. They flew over, they landed on the glacier. Yeah, is yeah. that right? Yeah. I did it in Jasper. And the guy that flew me over, uh, we took off because this was in July. And uh, he he said, if I would have known you're this much of a fanatic about glaciers, I would have put the skis on my plane with the wheels and we would have landed on the glacier. And it's like, don't tell me that, man. I, would, I was freaking. I just, I'm a fanatic of Rocky Mountains. Absolutely. Oh, that that's cool. Yeah, it is. Welcome to Beaver Creek. That's Beaver deep. Creek. Yeah, that's the most Western city in Canada. Pretty cool. Why do you think you why do you think you haven't played in Newfoundland? Uh you know what? So if whoever is listening online or anything, um, there's a festival called the George Street Festival in Newfoundland. Yes. Um, and July. we've uh, we've applied to uh, to play there just before COVID, and we were on the roster of getting accepted to play, and then they shut down for two years. So I'm in a reprocess right now of reapplying 
to play in Newfoundland at the George Street Festival. So we're trying to get as many people. I have friends in Newfoundland right now and are trying to put together, you know what I mean? And um, uh, for us to play out there. So I think, uh, I think you'd be like, you'd be rocking out there. I mean, they'd love you. Well, thank you. And, and I, you know, that's, that's the kind of, uh, that's, that's the kind of show we want to, we want to show them, man. Show that we're yeah. proud Canadian. I'm a, I'm a natural gearhead. I sing and, and, and perform about it. And, uh, you know, let's rock the house, yeah. man. You so might, you might want to get, Newfoundland. yeah, we might have to get Penny to screech you in out when you go out there, right? From the, she was on our podcast. Uh, we, she, she's from Newfoundland and she, we did a screech in on, on the air. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, it was cool. So she's a hoot. I seen her at the snowmobile show. I was like, Penny! <laughs> oh, no, you, did. you guys recognize that bridge in the background? I don't, sorry. Corey, come on, man. You recognize that bridge in the background? No, I don't. You don't? That's the bridge nope. crossing over into Prince Edward Island. Oh, that's the that, longest that big, bridge in the world. One. Yeah, that's the longest oh, bridge in the world. Yet. Yeah, so when we performed at Cavendish Beach Music Festival, CF Moto, uh, I got them in line with Cavendish, and they became a major sponsor of the festival that year. And uh, I brought out my side by side, pulled it in my trailer, and my tour bus, and uh, we went riding around. That's why you can see all that red sand. Yep, that's the red dirt in PEI. Yeah, the bright red mud. Exactly. Uh, Bud the spud <clears throat> from the bright red mud. There you I should have known that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By looking at that dirt. dirt, man, it's red mud everywhere in PI. That's wicked. There's another close. And there's shot. another shot that we're on the beach. Yeah. Man, it's it's really red and muddy looking. It is. Oh yeah. You you feel like you look at the dirt and you think you're on the moon. Uh it's yeah. just a totally different sand. It's uh, just a just a reddish orange sand you know really yeah. cool dan b says potato soil he, yeah, he got it he said, it's, it he said uh, it's a confederation uh, bridge dan b did yep people are guessing sault saint marie you know so oh there's the backcountry logo right there in the bottom corner i'm hiding it yeah that's right man that. yeah she must have took that shot she's amazing oh yeah shelby did take that shot um rock, i'm trying to town guitar we- Yes, I still have that guitar. I got a custom wrap. I got a picture of my dad on the back side of it. Uh, and that was at a CF Moto event we did. I believe that one was in Quebec, Quebec City, that we performed. Right on. There we go. There's your outdoor sports. We got the, uh, the CF Moto side by side and your Arctic Cat sled there. Yeah, that's uh, that's right behind me, literally right behind the windows. Uh, I'm up on the second floor right now, but down at the bottom. So Sweet. that's what my house. That's what we overlook in the wintertime: the ice huts and the lake. Right on. Do you ice fish yourself? Uh, not much. Uh, if I got time, I'd rather be riding instead of sitting around an ice bowl all day. <laughs> that, that's like me too, right? Yeah, that's like me as well. And there I am. Uh, that's when I opened up for Brooks and Dunn in Kingston at the K-Rock Center and also at the Sudbury Arena. Wicked. Yeah. yeah you have the OPP yeah. shirt on. Is that the uh, the honorary uh, honorary uh, OPP shirt? Well, a uh, little story behind that. Back in the early mid-90s, I spent three and a half years as an auxiliary constable at the OPP. Um, and I got them to issue me a OPP shirt and got the, uh, authorization from OPP to wear the shirt for two shows and hand it back. Uh, I wasn't allowed to wear the OPP press, but they have allowed me to wear it for those two shows, which was pretty cool. That's, that's quite the honor. Yeah. And there's a familiar face. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's been around, a. A little bit, eh? So that's Keith Irvin. That's when we opened up for him. Uh, we well, we did the the night on the same stage up at the Stars and Thunder in Timmins. Uh, that was officially the largest concert I've ever performed at. Uh, there was about uh, thirty thousand people there that night. That was just insane. That's wicked. And if you watch the Water Ride music video, 
uh, the majority of the What a Ride music video include the performance that night uh, in Timmins. Oh, cool. Right yeah. on. <clears throat> there we go. There's Timmins again, the Timmins Water Tower. You got it. That was the night. Nice, uh, yeah, that was the night we did the uh, the show with uh, with Keith Urban. So, which, yeah, it was pretty cool. That great shot of the water tower in the background. Yeah, that is a great shot. Yeah. And we got a, what is this? A, this, this isn't a, is this a cast car? So they're actually, uh, they are officially called, they used to be called cast car. Uh, people still call them cast car. They are part of the NASCAR circuit. Cast car doesn't exist anymore. It is NASCAR. I got you. Uh, it's a good buddy of mine, Joey McComb. And he was part of the CBRT uh, NASCAR race team. And he, uh, we went out to a NASCAR race and he checked with his sponsors and all that kind of stuff. And they wrapped the hood of that car uh, for one race uh, just in the afternoon, which is just a blessing to be a part of the, for them to do that, um, which is pretty cool, man. Um, uh, you, you follow NASCAR at all? Yeah, a little bit. Did you hear the the big corner, um, <laughs> the yeah. big corner technique? The... Oh, I saw that. That was crazy, man. I was invited. Guy, to run, guy rode up the wall. Yeah, I know that was insane, man. So I was invited to uh, Talladega one year to go out to the uh, the races. That was my first NASCAR race I'd ever been uh, to in my life, uh, and that was just before it opened up for Brooks and Dunn. Uh, it was actually the weekend before. And I was talking to some of the NASCAR crew and everything. And to sponsor the hood of a car for a NASCAR race for one race is a million dollars. Holy shoot. To put your logo on the hood of the car for one race was a million bucks. I believe it. Yeah. And that doesn't include the race trailers, the sponsorships. And that was years ago. Now I, I couldn't imagine what it would sponsor. Like it's, it's crazy, man. You're in, you know, fifty to hundred million dollars to sponsor an NASCAR team for a year. It's crazy. So we're not getting the Snowmobile Sessions logo on a NASCAR anytime soon. <laughs> <what you're> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was pretty privileged to have my logo on the car for an afternoon. I'll tell you that much. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah it's Can like, you hear me now, is Gary? it like the? Yeah, I can. Yep. Did you have a question there? No, no, I didn't. I was just making okay. sure you could hear me. Oh yeah, for sure. The, uh, like, is it, is your life kind of like the Dukes of Hazard, where you get pulled over by the cops and they let you off the ticket if you play a concert in their hometown? <laughs> you know, it's funny is what it sounds is that mind you, I've only got pulled over and nowhere to lie, man. Uh, I think I pulled over speeding probably about eight years ago. I think it was, uh, yeah, eight years ago. Anyway, just, he knew who I was and slow down, Larry. And you know what I mean? And I was from the OPP. And, you know, it just kind of saved my ass. And I was, I was pretty cool. Um, a lot of the snowmobilers, the guys that are in charge of the snowmobiling division here in Sudbury, Sub Regional Police and OPP, I know the majority of the guys. And um, not not that I'm doing anything like, believe me, man, I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, I, I ride my sleds, man, or anything you'd see here. I'm riding my Sea Dew. Uh, Riding a Harley up in Temiskaming, and you know what I mean. I wait till we're done the rides, man, to have a few pops and a few drinks and stuff like that. You know, um, so I never have to worry. It's not I'm not depending on an OPP or or a regional police to let me by because I've had uh, six drinks in my body, and because I'm Larry Barrio, they're gonna let me fly by because I'm half in a bag. No, I, I doesn't fly, man. <laughs> You yeah, know, that's right. No, but no. it's just, you know, it, it's again, man, respect your sport, man. Just, you know, ride decently. You know, I, you know, if I had the odd beer on the trail, absolutely, man. I'm going to stop, have some lunch, have a beer for sure. I'm going to head back out for a ride. You know what I mean? We're allowed. I'm, yeah. I'm under the limit. Uh, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not breaking any laws here. You know, I'm not stopping and having six beers and then heading over to another no, place and having another six beers. And, well, no, exactly. Beer exactly. Then, yeah. That's all. I find sure. like the, when I, when I started riding the eight hundreds and the eight fifties, it's you, they, those sleds get you into trouble and they don't, they don't help you get out of trouble. So it's, it's very, very, I, I can't imagine people that drink on these things and, and go for broke because it's uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, 
but yeah, the uh, Shania Twain country throwing sparks says, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. But here we are. Uh, you're just railing it on the jet ski, and this is this your uh, is this your bike? No, nope, that was the one that was uh, that was donated to us from the Rock Harley Davidson in Sudbury. And um, I'll never forget when he handed me over the keys. He said, "You drop it, it's yours. You bought it." Uh, I forget what the price tag was on that bike, man. But it had there was chrome on top of the chrome on top of that bike, and I forget what it was worth, man. And um, you know, and you know what? I, I wasn't nervous driving it. It could have been a hundred grand the bike. I, I don't know, eighty grand, forty grand, twenty grand. It could have been a used bike. And I just I wrote it with uh, with pride, and I was confident in driving it, and uh, that's why I took it, man. That's you know, when you're nervous cool. driving stuff, don't get on it. You know, no, I that's true. People driving slow machines, man, that they shouldn't be on slow machines, and. You know, they figure they they can rip across a, a lake doing a buck twenty, and you know those are the people are getting hurt. Yeah, like I said, they'll get you into trouble, but they're not there when you have to get out of the trouble. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's this is the awesome. St. Charles and Big Bear Mud Rally. That's, That's crazy, insane, man. There See has the to be most of that. There has to be five hundred bikes in that shot. ATVs, side by sides. You name Over it. the weekend, the one just before the uh, before COVID, uh, they broke their record. They were close to 800 bikes for an afternoon. Wow. Holy. 800. Yeah. All yeah, just to get in that little mud puddle that's showing right there, huh? Well, it's, it's a lot bigger than that if <clears throat> if you see the uh, the picture to the left. But that's a part of everybody just plays in. But that, that's just a hangout spot. That's where you buy hamburgers. Yeah, I know that. Kind of clean up, but uh, the trails are yeah, endless all day, man. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's pretty Very cool event, man. Let's say Charles. I used to do the Dungannon mud bog up Bancroft, and there was they allowed four hundred bikes, and uh, okay. I thought I thought that was pretty crazy, but eight hundred, holy crap! Like, oh, it's insane. <laughs> and and wow. the cool thing, you don't see eight hundred bucks all day, eight hundred bikes all day, because there's trails all over the place, but they all end up back in this pit area at the end of the day. Um, but, uh, where you really see them is when you head back to the arena after the end of the ride and it's, it's insane. You want to see some bikes, man. Big bear, the St. Charles big bear rally is, is if you want to ride, man, that's, that's one of the events you got to go to. Nice. That's wicked. Yeah. Great shot here, Larry, you and your cat just carving in the snow. Yeah, that's the that are nine thousand. That's the uh, the first year they came out the nine thousand four stroke. Uh, that was taken. We're coming across. That's right across from uh, the Sportsman's Lodge, Cook Yemi Lake Lodge. Right on. Yeah, that was a great shot, man. I loved it. <clears throat> yeah, it's wicked. Rockstar Energy Jinx present presents. Yeah, yeah, man. So, uh, Rockstar, a good buddy of mine, Andre Lauren, that owns the OTSFF race team. Uh, he owns the Rockstar snowcross and motocross teams. And uh, I got hooked up with him, and we ended up getting a, a Dodge truck and wrapping the whole thing with Larry Berry on No Got Snow Glory, Rockstar on it. We performed at a bunch of uh, snowcross uh, races throughout the year. That was that one there was in Timmins. And then we did the one down in Horseshoe Valley. Uh, and then we did one in Quebec, and then we did the snowmobile show in Montreal, and we did the snowmobile show in Quebec also, which is pretty cool. That's wicked. There's that guitar with the hole worn right through it. Exactly, man. That's the one. Did, does it have a name? Do you name your guitars? Uh, no, I never did. I never really thought about naming it. Huh. I didn't know whether you're, you, you named maybe them it's or named, not. Maybe it's Gary. Maybe his name's Gary. <laughs> Yeah, Gary the guitar. Gary the That's guitar. Right. Man. I'll let you use. I'll let you use that there, Larry. Carry it on. Yeah, that's that's the pictures from from Larry. Awesome. So that's awesome cool. Uh, thanks for thank, yeah. Those are great and great stories to go with them. That's uh, that's pretty crazy, man. That's what a life. You, what a, a dream rock star life that you leave, right? <laughs> oh, thanks, man. It's uh, you know, it's it's not any different than. You know, you're self-employed. Uh, you're doing what you're doing. I don't know what you guys do for a living. Um, and 
at the end of the day, it's all about enjoying your life to the fullest, doing what you can. Um, you know, that's it, man. It's, you know what I mean? It's not about how much money you make and, uh, the type of house you live in or the type of lifestyle. Like everybody's got their ups and downs, man. But you know, when you start hearing people that, you know, pass away at young ages and, you know, my uncle passed away. He was 53 years old. He had bone cancer. Um, you know, never smoked anything in his life. He was fit, still worked out the gym all the time. And, you know, he was a good friend of mine. We went skiing together. And, you know, you just hear stories like that, man. It just break your heart. And, yeah. Um, you know, live life to living. the fullest. It, you got to live, man. Just enjoy life. And you know what I mean? You don't have to go in debt over years or remortgage your house, man. But you you want to ride, you know what I mean? Enjoy it, man. Go yeah. and enjoy the rides and whatever you ride. It, it doesn't have to be a brand new friggin' $25,000 uh, sled. You know what I mean? It's, uh, well, it's cool, man. I, uh, I enjoy it. That's what I love about snowmobiling is the people that you meet on the trails. Um, some of them, man, you'll meet. They'll be riding a 1998 uh, old Indy classic, man, you know, 500. Or you're going to meet a guy that's riding it, you know. Riding a brand new sled or a 2009, and it doesn't matter, man. Yeah, it doesn't matter the brand or make you're riding on. It's you're out and you're enjoying it, and you're meeting up with people, and you're supporting the trail plans. And for sure, um, you know that's the best, man. Nothing Are you involved with the OFSC at all? Like the, any of the clubs around Sudbury or anything like that? Yeah, I'm involved with uh, the Valley Trail Masters here in in the Sudbury area, which is the Valley, which is where I'm from. Right. Um, I be, I came on board last year to help them out as much as I could, and and I'm um, I'm kind of uh, embarrassed to say that uh, I didn't get a chance to donate as much time as I thought I would be able to. Yeah. Um, and I feel so bad for it. And you know, when you're working five six days a week, and uh, you know, you're playing on the weekends and everything, it just uh, <clears throat> I I try to you know be part of the of the club so that I can you know put in some time and I just, I didn't, man. Yeah. So, sure. uh, you know, hats off to the volunteers that are out there prepping our say, you know, our trails for us, man. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the instant the, the, uh, those uh, trail permits came on sale, uh, I bought it literally the minute after they came on sale. Yeah. So did I, yeah, for sure. But I mean, nice. I didn't, yeah. cool. I, I got till tonight at midnight and then I get my, I still get my discount. Woohoo. <laughs> Attaboy. I don't, I don't have to be that guy that posts my receipt online showing what I spent <laughs> on trail permits. Oh, eh? I know. I, I don't need to post it either, man. But you know what? I buy it. <laughs> there's there's so, nothing, more, nothing more that pisses me off between a guy in a trail with a brand new sled with no sticker. Oh, it's. Yeah, oh, it's I know. Brutal. I hate that. And I was I like, really? And then it's like, well, it's 200 bucks. What'd you pay for your sled? That's the cheapest you know, part of the and, sport, man. And the fuel the fuel to ride it too so but I here i'm gonna put the i'm putting yeah, the, the poster up on yeah, putting the poster up on screen here for everybody and they can take a screenshot of it if they want yeah. what um, about larry i got one question here um lunch spots any good lunch spots you can recommend on a around sudbury like stuff food kind of stuff if we were to I'm stop for so lunch you're riding, um the, the south end is is kind of you know, kind of hard to south end of Sudbury to get from point A to point B. If you are <clears throat> in Coniston, um, an awesome place in Coniston. Is uh, it the pizza? The pizza place? There's no, a no, pizza? no. Oh, <clears throat> Here, go ahead. They're called. Uh, oh my goodness! Forget. And they're one of our. I'm just. You know, you guys are catching me off guard with a bunch of stuff here. Uh, <laughs> and he's got, and he doesn't have his phone to Google it either. Which yeah, I know, I know. Right? <laughs> yes, the Colonial Inn in Coniston. It's Colonial called the Colonial Inn. Inn. Yeah, uh, Sandra really? and Dale are the owners there. Um, you can, if you're coming up to Sudbury, you can literally park right at the Colonial. From there, you can get the Sportsman. You can get to the North Ends of uh, great restaurant. They renovated the whole thing, man. Um, when we ride to Killarney, that's where we ride from is the colonial, uh, in Coniston, okay. uh, down, and down to Killarney, beautiful spot, lots of place to park your, uh, uh, your truck and trailers, uh, lots of room, great people, nice. uh, beyond that, the South end, uh, Chateau Gay, I know is at the South end. It's just down the road from, um, beside the um, moonlight, right? 
Yeah, uh, re- yeah, just yeah. up the road from uh, Royal Distributing. So if you need to park yeah, yeah. Royal or anything That's like that. And then when you come up to the north end, uh, once you get into the valley, we got a uh, couple of places. I'm um, hoping that the Monte Vista Golf Course, uh, which is right on the main track, they were open last year. Uh, I'd help them manage them and do some marketing for them one year. They're uh, literally just on in the back of my house uh, where they are. So I'm hoping they'll be open this winter. You got the Firehouse Restaurant in Cape Rail. Yep, um, like then that. you have um, the new Rockies, uh, Hiawatha's, which is at the north end of Lake Um Unfortunately, uh, the Sportsman is only open to the people that are booking there. They're not right, open to yeah. the general public, uh, which I totally understand. Um, and, uh, you know, speaking with the old owner, George, uh, staffing is a huge problem because you're all the way down, you know, 20 kilometers down on Kukiami Lake Road. Um, uh, they've his business has quadrupled since they've just catered to riders for the whole weekend. Um, and they can allocate their staff and food better that way. Right. Sure. Uh, and then from there, if you were to head uh, West, you got uh, Lake Menage, you got uh, Fairbanks Lake, uh, and then up towards um, uh, Cartier uh, up at the restaurant at Cartier. So we got, we got some really good, uh, some good stopping spots, man. Nice. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and and you're welcome to ride with us when we're up there, and, and uh, you know I appreciate your time. If anybody wants to to find you uh, as far as social media, follow you, follow your adventures, how do they how do they follow you there, Larry? You know what, man? Just uh, uh, send me a friend request or like my fan page, uh, Larry Burial, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I don't do Twitter. I just don't know how to. <laughs> You don't, you I don't, don't want to now that. I'm doing a lot of techie kind of Elon stuff, man. And, you know what I mean? There's so many things coming up. The Snapchat and all that. Like, like, Elon really, will kick you out like, anyways. How many do you have right. to be a part of, you know? So it's the uh, best thing is I usually post all my stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, if you uh, just like my page, you'll be able to follow uh, where we're at. you have any questions about riding, uh, anywhere I've rode to North Bay, Mattawa, been to Timmins, been to Elliott Lake, been to, you know, Killarney, have, you know, rode quite a bit in Northern Ontario areas. Uh, and if there's anything that I can help you out with and, and uh, link you up with a ride, or if you're coming up to Sudbury, send me a message on Facebook. I'd love to meet up with you guys on the trail and, uh, you know, be a guide for the afternoon and yeah, ride yeah, together, sure. man. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd love it, man. So that's, that's what I live for. It's, you know, Made up with different commodities on the trails, and uh, uh, you guys know that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, that's cool. No, like I, I appreciate your time tonight and filling us in and and on the on the Sudbury experience and your life on the road. I think that's awesome. I'm glad to have you on. It was like I said, it was just in in February when we were talking about it, and I said I got to get him on the show. He he's <laughs> he is power sports as we know it. So kudos well, to I you for cool, living, man. living the dream. Well, I know that uh, yesterday we were, we were messaging and uh, you had sent me a message and saying the show runs from, uh, you know, seven to nine, possibly nine 30. And I'm going, really? I said, I've done interviews, man. or nothing more than 20 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were talking today and you're, you know, Gary, you're saying, you're going to see, man, time's going to fly by. We're going to be chit chat. Next thing you know, it's going to be nine o'clock. And what time is it now? I was like, then after nine, mm-hmm. I was like, "Holy crap, man! This is awesome, dude!" And um, I didn't hear, I didn't, I didn't hear you once say you had to go. <laughs> that, that awesome, man. You know why? Because it's 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 really really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna really share your podcast and uh, Thank out you. to a, a lot of my social links uh, for you guys to uh, you know to to watch your show and uh, to stay in tune. And you know, the snow building community, man, is tight. And we're all sled heads and. You know, uh, everybody would just like to ride. And, you know, if you're up in uh, wherever the neck of the woods that you're at, man, um, you know, it's great to be a part of. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. This is really cool, man. I've been just enjoying chatting all kinds of stuff, man. You guys built me up to be a rock star. And uh, it's really cool, man. <laughs> you are. It. Yeah. You are. I love it, man. Mike we do, we do get a great. tune, though, right? We do get a tune. Yeah, we do. Out, right? I, but wait, Bruce Stewart says, thanks for coming on tonight. Great show, oh, guys. Uh, we also got that from Mike Gooley's as well. He appreciated meeting Larry. Uh, thanks, Larry. <laughs> Great time. Pro Polaris, Rob. Uh, there we go. Thank you.
Is there, a, is there a backstory to the song? What are you going to play us? What a ride? All right, man. So um, I'll play a little song. This one here is uh, it's kind of cool. It's fun to play acoustically and everything. And uh, A little story behind this one. It's a, uh, I'm the first country artist ever to remake a tragically hip song. Uh, when we opened up for, uh, yeah, absolutely, man, Gordani is just uh, uh, crazy. Um, we opened up for uh, Brooks and Dunn at the K-Rock Center in Kingston. And I was told from some people from Kingston, uh, we had already recorded Boots and Hearts down in Asheville. Uh, and they had recommended for me not to play it at the K-Rock Center because that's where the Tragical Hip are from. That's right, yeah. And basically... If you ever do a remake of a song, you got to be really careful with it because if you don't give it enough um, finesse, it's it's not done properly. People will shit on you. Like they'll just they'll eat, they'll chew you. Up. Um, oh, sure. I felt I made it justice, and we did a really good job on the song. The only unfortunate thing that I can't play is the harmonica because I'm going to be playing guitar, but I play a lot of harmonica on the song. Uh, and normally the um, uh, Boots or Hearts doesn't have any harmonica in it whatsoever, and I play a lot of harp in it, which is really cool. If you get a chance, just go and check it out. It's on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple, I, you know, iTunes and all that kind of stuff. It's called Boots or Hearts from, from the hip. Um, long story short, uh, I stuck to my guns and we played it. And as soon as I announced it out to the audience that I was, uh, I was the only country artist that ever would make a tragically hip song, the entire audience went silent. Just like that, it yeah, was silent. Must have been we had ten yeah, thousand must... people that didn't say anything. Right. Uh, played the song and uh, had a standing ovation at the end of it. Cool. Much right yeah, on. Pretty... Yeah, that's very good. Snowstorm says Larry's the kind of guy that you just want to sit down and have a beer with. Great show. <laughs> nice. Hey, man. I think that there's a problem here. The voices don't sound right. But I left myself on the answering machine set back in town tonight. I feel I slipped out of the wind of the next song. Switch out in the news. Even babies raised by the wolves, they know exactly. When they bend you, see when it starts to fall apart, man. Red air falls apart. They like boots or hearts or when they start. Red air falls apart. Fingers and toes, fingers and toes, what a thing we share. What it won't if you include, back that way, don't care. Now you're blocked off most of the main street for your faith. Hooray. Everyone in town now. Probably I'll agree. I'm lying in the bed I made. See when it starts to fall, my bed really falls apart. Oh, I feel so hard to win this start. Really falls apart. Well, you won't even let me talk to you. Got some air to clear. You probably won't agree on one thing anyway. That's what the hell is happening here. Oh, fingers and toes and fingers and toes. And for things we share. And for that one if you include. The fact that we don't care. See when it starts to 
man we got a lot of people just loving it man giving you the the emojis like crazy and this is awesome and yeah awesome. great it's cool man right on man well, yeah make sure to check out my music my music videos uh youtube spotify itunes all that kind of stuff and uh and um uh, you know let's do this again i definitely if you guys come up to Sudbury, i'll be very insulted if you guys don't touch base with me Oh, we definitely will. We will, yeah, for sure, we will. Yeah, we and if you want, uh, you can you can trailer it right at my place, park right in the back, and uh, we can hit right Whitson Lake, and uh, I'll take you on a good ride, man. That's oh, sweet. that's sweet. That's awesome. No, we'll we'll buzz. And when you get information on your uh, your big deal poker run ride, send yeah. it to me, and I'll prom- I'll I'll push it out on this show uh, in the weeks before the event or whenever you start um, advertising that. Okay, we'll do okay. that. But uh, no, I really appreciate your time today. And uh, I thank you, everybody. Look at all the emojis here. This is just it. The chat's blown up. We got like everybody just awesome, you know, thank hand you guys. clapping. No guts, no glory from throwing sparks. We got, oh, yeah, Bruce Stewart's got like four claps and shoot my shots, giving you the, the old, uh, he's Rock got on. tons of emojis on there. It's crazy. Well enjoyed there. Well enjoyed, awesome. and yeah. a lot of these Yankees probably don't even know who Tragically Hip is. So you got <laughs> you're gonna learn when you when you come up to Canada. Well, let's put it that way, man. If, uh, if you're from the U.S., you know the Tragically Hip. There is equivalent to Leonard Skinner is to them. That's True. pretty well about it. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I really appreciate your time, Larry. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments before we let it, we cut them loose? Uh, Gord would be honored, is what Shoot My Shot says. I agree. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thanks. For Best damn Canadian band ever. That's Larry Barrio, and, and the Tragically Hip aren't too bad either, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. That's great. Speeder 757 gives it the smiley face with a cowboy hat. Yeah, it's awesome. Great concert after a night of pints. Yeah, the Snowmobile Sessions is a great concert after a night of pints. I'm telling you, that was great. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna cut the show. Uh, we're gonna cut the show off here, and I'm gonna roll the credits. If you want to hang out afterwards, Larry, after we go off the air, uh, we can sit and chat for a minute or whatever. But um, I'm gonna roll the credits here, and thank you, Energy Power Sports, for sponsoring the show. Get out there to the open house this on November 5th, this weekend, and uh, it's Saturday in oakville and uh take advantage of some of the deals there's a show and shine going on as well um it's there's a lot to see and do there this weekend so make sure you're there and uh store roamers hillsburg store exactly (laughs) exactly larry Barrio, thank you again man really enjoyed that this night hell of a pile of fun Right on.